He presents it as like you're wasting your fucking time and he'll say that and by doing that you're like so surprised that something actually entertaining or funny is happening that that it becomes like the best like the best video you watch that day now, sometimes i love, his, I love of, the fucking fuck oh pop deep fry video that was fucking genius speaking of sam hyde dude the, the thing about it is i feel like the most entertaining thing about that guy is the contempt he has for his audience mm-hmm. you know what i mean 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like that's that's the joke, but it's yeah. also like yeah. something that gets old on on like both ends, and that's that's what I'm yeah, worried about. Is it, I don't feel like if you're in a good place, you probably aren't watching a lot of Samurai content. Like it's. That's kind of. That's kind I, of think, it's, I tend to think he made a lot of videos of like uh, advice type shit that, but and like he mm -hmm. did it legitimately. And I feel this a lot yeah. of the time too. And it's like, man, there's a lot of people like in these weird internet niches who could use uh, someone to give them some fucking. I, there's a lot of things you can tell people that they need to hear, but like yeah. the thing is, Sam was doing that legitimately, and then I feel really? like he he was like, okay, actually, fuck my fans. I'm just gonna give them bad advice for my own amu amusement. <laughs> <laughs> so so what can you remember like an example of like bad advice from Tim? Um yeah, I mean, well, is anyone is someone I, out there is going to But it's thing. like uh, my pills, bro. I I I need my pills, bro. And he's just talking about like how to like get out of paying like debts and shit like that. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny obvious. and I get what he's saying and there's like truth to it, but at the same time yeah. like most people are not capable of doing that. <laughs> They can't just like Dude, switch wait, a flip we, in their brain. Um, are, we, are, are we streaming? Are we visible now? It is Skinwalker Gang time on the Yakov stream. We are here live with your host, Yakov. I got Jack here with me. Good, y'all. And Polak is here. Whoop, whoop. What's up, boys? I was going to say, like, I did, I did show someone one of those videos. Um, and they did like follow the advice really, really badly and like probably like fuck themselves. <laughs> but, but the thing is, if you don't have any tact, if you're not, the thing is like <laughs> Sam Hyde, everything he does is funny, period. Yeah. Like that's his, that's his charisma or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, if most people do the shit Sam Hyde does, they will just be assholes, period. Right. <laughs> yeah. They don't yeah. have the skill. They're not going to get out of that debt. They're just going to dig themselves deeper. Deeper and deeper. So fucking, everybody fucking like dropped the fucking turd in the fucking deep dryer. It was ridiculous. I, I, you know, I really do like Sam. I really appreciate what he does. It's fucking fish tank did nothing for me. I thought it was boring as hell. Yeah, it's guess, boring as fuck. Uh, but people loved yeah. it and they gave him a ton of money. In my mind, it was just like, did that money justify all the headaches? And it, it, it's not just a financial thing. First of all, it's like, I think it might have been ridiculously expensive to to get like that piece of property and to you know fucking accommodate all these fucking people. I don't know how much that it costs. I don't know what kind of insurance is involved. I don't know. Probably very expensive. Did they cover that in donations? Probably. Was there probably a shitload of backlash and crap that they didn't want to deal with from like landlords and shit like that? Fucking service providers. This is is that all worth it? And it's like I guess and skinwalker tapes do the same thing better. Uh, no, and not get I mean, I can get end, just as banned. Big brother. So, I, mean. I can do that. I well, it it sh well, you, that's what you want though. You want drama between people, but I feel like that's not really what was brought to the table. I, it was a bunch of. Yeah, like, there was one. There were two good moments, and they both involved airsoft fatty. And one was where he oh. got like the kind of cute, nerdy, like anime girl to like stand like uh, like tied to airsoft fatty while he's taking a shit. And the other one was when Airsoft Fatty like fell downstairs. Those were the two good moments of, of that the was the funniest movie. moment. Well, <laughs> and I, I think, I think that the the Asian dude being busted for like for being a groomer or whatever, I think that was extremely funny. But I, I think the mistake was immediately kicking him out of the house. And a lot of people be like, "No, kick that pedophile out of the house." But it's like, no, let's take a week. Isn't Sam Hyde a groomer? I don't know. I don't care. I, I don't care. I'm literally just trying to laugh here. So if it's me, I'm not going to kick him out of the house for being a fucking groomer or a pedophile or whatever the fuck. I'm going to take a week and I'm just going to gaslight the shit out of him. I'm going to mention things here and there to make him wonder if I know. And I'm going to make him live like that for at least a week. Right? While, while super chats say things, let the super chats roll. I'll fucking pretend I don't even know what the fuck anything means, but I'll drop tiny hints here and there. And all the while, he'll be worried that he's about to get assaulted. <laughs> right? That's way funnier. And people are like, no, it's a liability for Sam to have a pedophile in the house. Where There were no children in that house. You know what's, what's actually a liability is sending this guy out into the world to the bus stop. He probably found a kid at <laughs> yeah. that bus stop. It was very safe <laughs> locking him in that fucking house. Yeah. That's, that's I should have made that yeah. fucking roll. 
Yeah. And fucking and, and one ends it's like, well, Sam doesn't want to be associated with a pedophile. It's like too late. <laughs> if you look up fish tank, you're gonna see this shit as one of the top things, right? Like, it's too late. Yeah. So, so I, hate to bring, I hate to bring all that up, but like I don't know. That's something that people who hate Sam bring up is that he like he like got with some girl on Fortune or some shit. There's like some funny I, I believe yeah, he like did. A, yeah, it was like a 17 year old girl or some shit. I believe he did all sorts of dirty things. Yeah. I believe. 16. He, he I, dude, all of these types, you know he's fucked up in the head. You know, we know he has like whatever mental disorders. Really? You know, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. Like, I mean, but like, yeah. I mean, and I don't want to sit here and justify that either, but I also don't think that any of that's been conclusively proven. I don't know. But it's the type of thing where it's like, you have not. to. I'm sure it's not conclusively proven. Yeah. I'm sure it's not conclusively proven. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it's like yeah. a rumor. I, I'm just talking rumors. I'm like, this, this is what shit he could charge me for in fucking court. I don't know. But. <laughs> yeah, and I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in Million Dollar Extreme 2, but I don't see how that can happen. I don't know. I don't know. Unless, like, people have said Fish Tank was just to get the budget for that, but we haven't seen anything from that. I don't know. I'm hoping I'm hoping we get some good Sam Hyde okay. content. It's been a long time, I feel. There was a bunch of clips of yeah. MBE2 look pretty funny. Really? I don't know if it's really going to happen. Yeah, yeah, they had a whole, like, pre-promo type thing. So I think it's happening. Does it look like it has a budget? It looks it looks like MDE1. Well, that's good. It does look like MDE1. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's exactly like, what I would want. Good. Nothing crazy, but nothing, like, not, not fish tank. Like, not, like, just some people in a house. Uh, and it ki- uh, just <laughs> fucking kills me because I know there's you want to get half schizos, you want to you want people who can go totally schizo but also can control it when it's time to like have a production and do entertainment. And you just got a bunch of spurs, <laughs> whatever. That's not the point. Yeah, whatever. So I had a I had a spooky unknown creature sighting the other day. Oh, okay. unidentified creature spotted, spotted. Now I I live in the Pine Barrens of Jersey. There's like animals, dude. We got animals. In my yard, there's always a herd of deer. There's always turkeys. There's foxes at night walking by my house. Always hear coyotes out in the woods. Fucking snapping turtles sunning on the fucking road out front of my house. Fucking sweet. So, that you know, critters are normal. I, yeah. I go outside with my dog the other day. I'm going around my garage and I see something laying in my yard. And it's dark out. And it's about... It's probably about 25, 25 yards away. And it looks to me like a deer, a single deer laying out in my yard. And that wouldn't be too weird. Um, because, de- like I said, deer are always there. But never a singular deer. That alone that struck, alone struck me as struck. odd. Um, so as I'm coming around to the garage, I see this thing. And I, I don't want my dog to go for it. Because I know his reaction will immediately be to bark and run at it and make a total scene. So I pull him back. <laughs> And I'm watching this thing, and then it notices us, and it it stands up, and that's when I noticed that it was not a deer, and it slinks off into the woods, very very cat like, and mountain lion. It's not weird to have stray cats and shit in my yard. That's totally normal. But like I said, I was like 25 yards away from this thing, and it struck me as a deer. I don't know how I could mistake the size of a house cat for that, and then. As I'm walking around with the dog, all I can make out from the tree line, which is about 30 yards away, I see just like these glowing eyes, these yellow eyes shining in the tree line. Now, like I said, 30 yards away, would I be able to see that on a simple house cat? Probably not. No, that sounds like a that sounds like a big cat. It does. It's like eastern mountain lion. It it's does. One of the, like the missing eastern mountain lion. There yeah. are um, mountain lion sightings in my area. They're very rare. None of them are confirmed. Uh, if you go up to North Jersey, there there are more legitimate sightings, but it's never around here. There's supposed to be bobcats around here. You never see them. I've never heard of a sighting of a bobcat. What are the big black cats called? Panther. Oh, okay. Like yes. Yeah. Some shit like that. Um, yeah, well, that's it's essentially an alien big cat yeah. sighting because in every alien big cat sighting, like you have in Europe or you have in Australia or something like that, um, the simple explanation is that it's just a misidentified house cat. And you can look at videos and be like, "Oh, I'm actually not sure what I'm looking at. Not enough scale." And that's kind of how I felt. But the colors of this thing definitely said mountain lion to me. I want to say I saw a mountain lion in my yard. Yeah, I live right on the border of a of a state forest. Jaguar. That's something. 
Jaguars, dude. They come around, dude. <laughs> they're they're not around oh, yeah. at all. <laughs> Never. I don't know. You might have just caught that weird sighting. Uh, yep. I, it was... I saw one when I was like three. What? A mountain lion. I was uh, fishing with uh, one of my friends. We were. Well, I was like probably about five, actually. We were fishing for like brim in this little creek uh, by my house. And, uh, you know, brim are these little fish. They're about the size of your hand. Um, we were catching them. And all of a sudden, the dogs, because I had this uh, Labrador Retriever, big black lab at the time. And uh, he came over and like his little dog, he had a beagle. They came over and uh, all of a sudden I looked up and then the tree line, you could see a, like a mountain lion just walking through the trees about probably about 25, 30 yards away. So normal in Texas? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have them like we have a shitload of them. They migrate through here constantly. Uh, if you sometimes in the summer, you can go out on like my back deck and hear them yelling. They sound like a woman screaming. We were talking the other night about uh, about the Florida Panther with some of the Florida bros. That thing's very interesting. Um, there was a time, they say in the 70s, it was estimated that there were probably only like 25 of them left in the wild. And because of these low numbers, they, they had a really bad problem with uh, inbreeding. And so many of them had heart defects that they weren't even living long enough to, to you know, so that the species could go on. Um but they've since made something of a recovery. Now there's like 200 of them in, in the wild, which still sounds like nothing to me. Yeah. Very interesting, uh, dude. Bring back the fucking the cougars, dude. We need them back. I frankly got too many deer. It's obnoxious. Not I mean, too, bro. Yeah. yeah. Jack needs to become a big game hunter and like eat the deer. He's going to become like John Logan Field. I'm getting foxes and I fucking love that shit. Like, yeah. Like if I wake up, wake I, cause I'll, 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 I wake up in the middle of the night and I'll look outside and I'll see fucking foxes and it's fucking great. It's fucking yeah. Cool. That's how it is. Like at 3 a.m. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll look out the window at 3 a.m. and a fox runs by the fucking street light outside my house. It's best, dude. Yeah. Here it's possum trying yeah. to get to my chickens at 3 a.m. This one night they were playing with each other in my yard, like just like fucking like wrestling and shit and like jumping at each other and like it was it was great. It's fucking awesome. This is like that's like that's what I want dogs to be. I want dogs to be fucking foxes, dude. That's all I want. Like they're just like a little more wild than a regular. They have them in dog. Russia. Yeah. They have domesticated foxes in Russia. It's very interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like there was uh there was a a fur breather that uh, basically accidentally domesticated foxes. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Really cool. Sorry. Oh, There's a... wait, you like it? <laughs> well, the There's idea was he was trying to make them to where you could handle them easier because it's like way less of an issue, I guess, with an animal that's behaved to like, I guess, kill it and take its fur. But uh, he was trying to breed them to be more like friendly to people. And all of a sudden, he basically unlocked the same traits and foxes that dogs have. So you tell me got floppy. he he wanted them to be friendlier with people, so he started breeding with them to to get them acclimated <laughs> to people. <laughs> no, he started a breeding program of okay. foxes. So Makes like more you know, sense. and like in in the end, he got uh, foxes with floppy ears and like wag their tails like dogs. Essentially, oh, we love them. Yeah. yeah. So, boys, I'm missing yeah. my music festivals. I want to go to a music festival, but it's too late. But it's too late. There's very few around here at this point. I could find one if I wanted to pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do it. But, God damn it, one way or the other, people are partying. There was a fish concert recently in Chicago where a man supposedly clawed his eyes out. Now, that guy had a good time. I'm not having that good of a time. He probably got some research chemicals. I don't know. I don't know what it takes to claw your eyes. I feel like you could do it on any drug if you just tried hard enough. Hello, this is a farmhouse. I clawed out my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at this video. It's not as bad as it sounds, in all honesty. Let's let's look at it here. Are you guys watching? Yeah. Yes. Hell yeah, dude. This is a man who had a bad trip. Let's hit it. <laughs> I 
I think he's screaming oh, no more pain as he stumbles around, fucking knocking everything over, <laughs> grabbing women with his <laughs> eyes allegedly missing. Like a oh, zombie. Uh, and just, yeah. That's looks... awesome. Look at that blood yeah, just, smear. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, holy shit. Beautiful blood smear no there. Wow. He's like a zombie. Holy shit, that's terrifying. The Mexican guy's <laughs> laughing at him. The Mexican janitor's <laughs> laughing. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, he's missing his eyes. Holy shit. Okay, so yeah, don't get caught with your pants down and your eyes missing at the fucking fish concert, dude. Don't eat the brown <laughs> ass. <laughs> no. Real talk. <clears throat> Allegedly, the, the eye thing was just uh, a rumor, and that was not true. And they actually bashed his head against something. And that's why there was blood everywhere. <laughs> so it's one or the other. Now he was like that is easy listening as music, dude. Like I don't know how the fuck you fucking kill yourself listening to fish. Dude, they party hard. <laughs> they, they party hard at those shows. I don't really get it either, but they sure <laughs> enjoy it. Dude, that is the most boring. Like I got into that shit for like a week, and that's the most boring music I ever listened to. Yeah, I'm not a jam band guy. I like some jam. I can deal with some jam shit. I'll, there's some stuff that I actually do like, but. And as a guy who came out of like festival scenes and like hippie shit, like yeah, jam yeah. stuff is not for me. That shit is wanky. Yeah. It's just wankery, dude. I don't care how yeah, long. Yeah. I'm seeing noodle for five hours on your guitar. Just keep fucking playing whatever comes to mind, dude. <laughs> yeah. And then you know it, this shit's it's weird. Cool idea, dude. I think there's definitely there's like uh, there are like intelligence links to all of this from like the cia and everything like from the freemasons the cia there was a whole thing between like uh lsd mind control uh you know the freemasons the grateful dead the grateful dead members went to bohemian grove that's yeah, where they hung out like that was their festival yes so it's not too shocking that that insane drugs are going around fish concerts. i mean it kind of makes sense hippie thing came out of bohemian grove like it's like the shit the hippies were doing is like shit that the elites were doing in, in those fucking rituals like, i think before they have to get, i was gonna say did they have to get butt raped by bill clinton the yeah. Hippies, yeah um yeah I, I the thing is i think uh the hippies in that whole scene could have been like a prototype of what we see today where it's like uh mk ultra the fucking world because yeah. I, you know, I think one of the first steps to like attempting to MK Ultra the, the world was like unleashing LSD. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, it's it's like that becomes you you, you totally yeah. I don't know how, how how much you want me to go about this, but yeah, that like literally that is like cent this is central to like my whole fucking worldview on like politics and shit. Like I think that they. They basically nuked people's brains from like what people believe, what people basically had accepted as the fifties and like early sixties standard of life. People did a whole bunch of acid and they completely reversed everything. And then the people that reversed it, that became the standard. And now that's, that's basically the world yeah. we're living in. And now we're the fucking counterculture who are like, maybe we shouldn't do what some asshole who was on like, a million hits of acid thought we should do about gender or whatever the fuck in 1969. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's not a yeah. good idea. I, I think uh, LSD was essentially a, a um, it, it was a double-edged sword. I think unleashing it exactly. onto the populace, it, it did, it did kind of push a lot of uh, the discourse in the direction that they wanted it to go. But at the same time, I think it made a lot of people think a lot of crazy things that they never yeah. intended. I, you, Cause you get things like Charles Manson out of that. Like you get yeah. real yeah. counterculture when people are faced with the reality and they finally look it in the mirror and come to terms with who they are, where they are. Well, the, the Freemasonic concept, Ordo ab chaos, order, order out of chaos, you know, that, that I, I think we should take that very literally. They're not saying, 
they're going to control everything. They're saying, we're going to create a whole shitload of chaos and let the chips fall where they may. And there's going to be shit forking off in all these different directions. And then at the end of the day, we're going to have enough power, we're going to have enough money, and we're going to have enough influence that when we pick pick up the pieces, everything that matters is going to fall into our order, yeah. our new world. Order. And oh, yeah, yeah there's still that. a whole bunch of chaos there. There's still a whole bunch of chaos, and you can still do things that go completely against their agenda. But yeah, there is still at the end of the day, there is their order coming out of that chaos. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Today, I think a lot of the PSYOP that we're seeing, we're seeing the aliens, we're seeing disclosure, we're seeing all that, which is making people shoot off into all of these weird beliefs. Some of them are probably unintended. We're probably going to see, you know, the UFO cults come back, all sorts of weird stuff's going to happen. Um, yeah. But then we see the crossover when UFOs are showing up at music festivals. So mm. Let's check that out. Dude. <laughs> I got the video. Dude. Oh, yeah. We got evidence. Holy shit. We got the uh, the really Dutch the Dutch festival Electrum. Imagine there's some acid there. Holy shit, Amsterdam! Oh. Look at that boy go. We rocking. God, there's some good looking women there. Holy shit. I mean, there always are at EDM fest, bro. That's an EDM fest for you. Well, we need to go to a fucking EDM fest. I agree. I need to the charisma. <laughs> need to so, so there you see the orb yeah. flying by. Um, I don't know what else this could be other than exactly the orbs that we've been seeing in media as UFOs. I, I don't see this being a drone. I think it's going too fast and it's just leaving. Or you think this is a government... This I don't think this is a TR three B. No, I mean, no. Do you think do you think that UFOs are drones? I mean, some of them. Probably. I think I think these orbs are to some extent, but I'm talking about it's not like a commercial drone. It's not like but, a regular. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah a drone that is beyond the the technology level that we're supposed to believe we're currently at. I think they want us to believe that these are alien drones sent to surveil the Earth. Yeah. I think that is yeah. the, the what they're going with, but I frankly I think these these are definitely like government things. Exactly. I think the but military it's, it's, controls it's these press things. Technology, the press technology that's, yeah. that's beyond what we're supposed yeah. to believe. This is what I'm saying with right. uh, with disclosures. Like we got the soft disclosure. Well, they'll, they'll like show us all these yeah, crafts and be like, yeah, these are real, but we don't know where they came from. The point is to to get the blame off of themselves. They don't want to take credit yeah. for these things. When we see anti gravity devices and weird surveillance. They don't want to get the blame. They want to be able to say it's aliens and create a whole conflict out of it. Right. Yeah, we got a weapon on space, guys. But I think this is definitely one of those weird orbs. And let's uh, let's watch this video a little more because it is. I do like looking at festival crowds. Now it's said that this girl with the notebook and the pen is taking cocaine orders. I've never seen it done that way, but I do believe it. I don't know what else she'd be doing there. Oh, and and probably, yeah, getting and orders, so that easy to get it. With yeah. the, you break up the deal into multiple parts to make it less likely to get busted. Okay. That is like that's like a common thing with buying heroin and shit on the corner. I've never seen that at a festival quite like this, but that is the way to do yeah. it. You send the hot girl around. How it normally is at fest is, frankly, the hot girl goes around the crowd, and she she will be the one who asks if you want anything, and then if you say yes, she will take you directly to the dealers okay that's what i normally see at best so it's not too dissimilar really <sighs> yeah music fests i miss them i miss open air black markets and look dude it's not even a matter of buying anything i just like open air black markets one. yeah they're selling everything dude they're selling all the drugs they're selling all all of the merch all the trinkets all the paraphernalia you could want they're selling fucking motorboat these titties for five dollars dude staple a dollar <laughs> to my head it costs a dollar to staple blow job dollar contest. yeah blowjob contest all, it. <laughs> it's a thing <laughs> i don't know That's not... we need sheer human freedom look i'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing i'm just saying explore all options <laughs> not yeah. all of them leave some of them <laughs> look if you're at the gathering <laughs> stays at the gathering <laughs> Whatever. Carnival you know. Dude. It's the carnival carnage, baby. 
So, uh, speaking of Juggalos, there is new Chris Chan news. Chris Chan has made his triumphant return to the internet, which is very strange. All of my speculation has been wrong, as has almost everybody else's speculation. I thought it was telling that he hadn't made any videos yet, that he hadn't published anything yet. I figured there's no way Chris Chan has the self-control for that. Um, I figured since he hadn't made anything, it almost indicated, it had to indicate that he was not allowed on the internet. That's what I assumed. But now we've got content and it's higher quality than we've ever seen. So is it that Chris Chen really had the patience to wait until his triumphant return? He really, he, he learned Sony Vegas while he was in jail, dude. <laughs> He spent all his time in jail learning Sony Vegas, apparently. And now he's making content? What's going... So, it's gone from me thinking there were, like, restrictions and we wouldn't be hearing from Chris to now he's got a team, seemingly, working with him and they're making the best content they've ever made. Like, as far as, uh, um, you know, a quality standpoint. What the fuck is going on? Very strange. It's very strange. Is the government bankrolling Chris Chan? I mean, in a way, yeah, he gets his whatever disability he gets. But the question is, like, what's up with that girl? Now, Chris Chan, we got to watch the videos, but the girl who has been seen with Chris Chan at the Food Lion, at the game store, seemingly being affectionate with him, um, maybe she's responsible here. But maybe there are other other things, too. Like, there's uh, his, his Etsy store. His Etsy store is, like, brilliant now, dude. It's fucking brilliant. He's selling... Sonichu medallions for $35, dude. That's a reasonable price. He's never put reasonable prices. In these situations, it's important to remember at the end of 1984, Winston says, I love Big Brother. But the reason he's like, what we don't think about when he says, I love Big Brother, is that Big Brother also loves you. And Big Brother loves you just enough. Not enough to give you the, your government-sanctioned girlfriend, even though they've given that to Chris Chan. You're not going to get that. Um, no. Not enough to, like, even necessarily give you food. Not enough to give you, like, basic things that will, like, uh, make you give you good video games or, you know, basic things that, that would, like, basically allow you to exist and not be fucking frustrated and angry all the time. But the government, Big Brother will, he loves you enough to give you Chris Chan. Yeah. And so that's why the MK Ultra project in its current form has given us this return of Chris Chan after post post op, post surgery, post trans, <laughs> post um MK Ultra psyoping, post um uh interdimensional um exchanges yeah. that he's had with the Mewtwo from the other uh, I, I've heard this described as Disney Star Wars Chris Chan. Yes. He's not the same. It's not yeah, the same. Person. It's not the same. So, so, he, so he's ditching Pokemon. He's ditching the. No. no, no, no. He's all lit, yeah, he's, he, dude. He, he talking he, about consuming he, products. He, 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 he do that to you? He's get, he, he's gonna play the hits. He's gonna he's gonna be the Christian. You, you we'll we'll love. see that. We'll get into that. But I, I'm telling you, like, there's something weird going on. He here's how brilliant his Etsy store is, dude. He's selling bags of rocks from his driveway, from the driveway of the Sanichu Temple. And you, dear viewer, might be out there thinking, I'm not going to buy his rocks. Dude, <laughs> why the fuck wouldn't you sell the rocks? Someone's going to buy those fucking rocks, dude. Yeah. Someone Trans will. Girl, bath water. <laughs> and if, if you only make $30 off the bag of rocks, you've come out so far ahead on that one, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> It's just brilliant. It's brilliant. So let's get into some of this Trans, content. He's got to be the coach. Incestuous rapist bathwater. <clears throat> I'll say this. Yeah. He, he, we're going to see the use of a green screen here. In the avatar on his Etsy store, he has the green screen behind him, which leads me to believe whoever is in control of his videos is in control of his Etsy store. Hmm. Okay. So let's let's go from here. Let's. I think we're just gonna watch all these videos basically in long form. Uh, let's do it. It has to happen. Let's I haven't it. even watched all of them yet. Let's do it. I'm ready for some cringe. But this shit we all talked about. Like, why is why are they modern? What's that? 
Let's get out of the way. Like here. we've been talking about, like why haven't why hasn't somebody monetized Christian? It sounds like well, somebody finally it's did. because he is self sabotaging. Right. That's why now <laughs> That's when why, when man. Noel tried to do it, it it still at the end of the day all fell on Christian to like you know complete orders and shit like that, which he couldn't do. Yeah. So someone's yeah. got to be there in person to do it for him. Yeah. Which now that's when the girl comes into into play. So let's uh let's check this video out. Let's let it play a little bit. You can't keep I, getting away with it. I want to let everybody know that it's best watched in uh with headphones on so you could really like experience the goddamn horror of this shit. So <laughs> this is the boss, and I'm sick of waiting. Get your crap together and stop following those twerps. <laughs> Prepare for stupid. Make it lucid. Prepare for stupid. Make it lucid. Oh, we'll focus on one mouse. Once we get it, we'll rule the house. I'll be the dude. So very, very much the product of the tale. He is just singing nonsense. He made some weird parody about Team Rocket or some shit. Or I don't know what's going on exactly here, but it is horrifying. Now here we hear the effects coming. This is horrifying. Holy shit. Right, we gotta, this is not good. Before this goes any further, we gotta we gotta just analyze some shit here. This is not good. Okay. What the fuck is coming out of his nose? <laughs> what was that? Oh, what what is coming out of his nose? <laughs> Like, what right? What is going on? Yeah. Now, but like, like he get he hit him in the face. It looks like he's got a bloody nose. Other people have said that that fucking antipsychotics, a side effect, is causing bloody noses. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> not, and it's not surprising that he would be on antipsychotics. But how drugged up is he? Right. I'm not gonna make it, dude. <laughs> We're doing this. I'm gonna let it play a little bit here. I just wanted to. Oh, I got. I, mean, I got a few more things to analyze here. We're gonna go into the editing. Well, while we just have the first impressions here, we got the Jesus and Pals South Park backdrop. Not surprising for Chris. Seems like something he would actually use. He would misunderstand something that a cartoon was a joke a cartoon made, take it literally, and now he's Jesus in South Park. Yeah, that makes sense. Whatever. Um. Now we have we have bad. Uh, eh, not even that bad. Just green screen effects. It's goofy and corny green screen effects. Um, it's not well done. It it strikes me as this was meant to seem like Chris Chan could have made it himself, but we know that's not true. But yeah. There's no fucking way that's true. So yeah, let's let's let it roll a little bit more here. You can talk. Oh, he's just singing. Don't matter. He'll he'll talk soon. Where do you think he does this shit? This is probably in a bed. <laughs> is he is he at the girl's house? Is he at Barb's house? When he <laughs> no. When he came back, he announced it on Twitter and he had a photo of a, one of his toys at Barb's house. Was it a recent photo? Is he doing this in Barb's house while having sex with her? Oh shit! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Make it lucid. Holy shit! This is the most calories he's burned in a long time. Oh, he threw a hadouken. That's called a curse, yeha, meha. <laughs> oh, for God, it's a. Then I get you out. I'm Trump's like a veil. <laughs> So yeah, it goes. There's, it goes on like this. <laughs> How do you think Chris is looking these days? Give me your your thoughts on his appearance oh, these days. Dude, this is a psyop, dude. There's nothing, nothing this funny was created by me. I, I can like intravenously. In okay. The okay. <laughs> so now <laughs> you will keep wanting to say that Chris is a psyop. I don't think there's so much of a conspiracy around Chris as it is simply people, content creators look at him and just see dollar signs at this point. 
That's true, but a lot of content creators are also the CIA. That's true. It's true. It's true. They're the C it's Washington Post, for example. But um Yes. That's a great example. Oh, the, I do think Occam's razor here is probably the way to go yeah. is that people like I see Chris and I'm like, fuck, man, if I could have him on my stream, that'd be money. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, I, I don't go all in on like like this, but <laughs> I, think think, I, I don't think the, the mat like the mat, I don't know, like the, the government created the the Internet to destroy people's minds like this. This is terrifying. So there's that level of it. And then there's the level of like also people in the CIA are fully aware of him and and of how many people are watching him and would fuck with him. But it, that doesn't really I like that, I'm not, that only it, works now. That doesn't work. Unifying. It doesn't work in 2007 when they were finding and shit. Yeah, no, 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 I don't think that it's all. I, no, no, that's that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't think that it's all a conspiracy at all. Yeah. I think that it's like it's like the conspiracy comes in after the fact. Like the the government and the CIA and all that shit comes in after the fact. I think like later after it's already established, this is like a low cow. But it's also the entire creation of low cows itself is part of the cybernetic control mechanism of the internet, and it's like basically holding certain figures up to us and saying you should be like this person you should not be like this person etc chris is one of the people that it's holding up to us to say like don't be like this so that you can be like hassan piker or sam hyde or fucking chapo trap house or come town or whatever <laughs> i don't know i would i would have more to say about that whole thing later though i promise you'll get back to it so let's uh this is when he starts actually talking and doing his sermon so let's uh listen to this hey and merrily to everyone welcome to welcome. this that song you just heard if you're not wearing headphones his voice is only coming out of the fucking left ear it is in mono it's weird it just makes it all very very demonic it's strange <laughs> That was a dedicated to all the lingering and lost toxic haters, fakers, and darkest sinners that came from the 1218 half of our earth that has been bugging us for the longest of time. And so, you tw so 1218 is our our dimension, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. 1218 is the, that's what I was talking about earlier. So 1218 is is the is that's the failed dimension, right? And then I think that's and our then the other one. I think it is, but I think okay. we're supposed like, the dimensional merge has already happened. You're so telling me that this in... is Gnosticism? <laughs> oh yeah, of course it's, it is. It's, it's Pokemon. Pokemon is Gnosticism. That's true. Pokemon is Gnostic in the most like satanic version of Gnostic, like the most famous. Yeah, it version teaches of evolution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, but, but yeah, the um, so the fail world is where the 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 damn dirty trolls are. They're coming from there, right? And then we have like the the new world that he, where he's like the messiah and shit, right? Mm -hmm. And like, and he exists in a, both, and we're merging, right? Okay. Well, there's a merge where now we're in the the better world, but there are still people coming from that world, and they're coming in to troll. Mm. Possibly, damn possibly dirty, right now. dirty trolls, this dream and haters. Might come from the demiurgical evil uh, dimension that hates Chris. No, they're here to stop Chris. I could never hate Chris. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> well, the true fans are the damn dirty. Trolls, I'm a fan right? of the motherfucker. Can yeah. I say? Yeah. Why but uh, yeah, what, what were the really numbers? Really I want to plug this into the fucking gematria machine. Like one ninety-seven, C one ninety-seven, and C fucking one. I don't know, dude. I I'll don't figure know. it out. I'll figure it out. Okay. Don't let none of this shit's real anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna run this by some schizos I know and see what right. they think. Let's, we gotta listen to this, dude. It's important. <laughs> this is Jesus. Chris <laughs> Muslim channel or Jesus Muhammad Krishna. He's Alistair Crowley. Yeah, He's Alistair Crowley. Jesus, what's the Crowley? Alistair Crowley, you son Doing that? Come on, get out of the picture already. You're long gone. Got him. Got him. Anyway, yes. With the ultimate miracle chaos control, I ascend and make my return to the internet in all that is good and well being. I am divine and connected to everything, and I know and not know at the same time. 
between the consciousness, the subconsciousness, and the unconsciousness. I know all. I see all. I foreknow all. I've been there, done that, everything. everything. <laughs> so now, with that, we're still amidst our dimension merge completion and the moment of future asked. As you shall learn shortly enough with the events that happened back in late February 2006. But for now, we are on the road, on the road. Sorry, what? Late February 2006? When would you say that? On I'm, the road. I'm hypnotized. The back in late February 2006. Megan so Schroeder. Now, we what are Megan Schroeder. Megan Schroeder, the Antichrist. <laughs> Megan Schroeder. The true Demiurge. <laughs> oh, dude, I do love Megan. I'm glad she got out unscathed. She's a beautiful lady. I love her. Where is she? She's she's got to be doxxed into like into fucking. Yeah, Olivia. but nobody nobody wants to fuck with Megan. Okay. <laughs> she she it seems that she's married and she has a craft. Thing that she does she does crafts they're yeah. nice. nice i don't know nice. whatever she exists she she, she's an actual human she exists she's fine it, they say there was a guy who was trying to do a uh chris chan documentary a few years ago before he went to the jail um and he he initially set up a reunion between chris and megan just for the documentary but then like it's well, the rumor I heard was that Megan looked into it was like actually I don't want to meet this creep again <laughs> I don't want to do this again that makes sense yeah and the whole thing was yep. scrapped but yeah she's doing fine it's that's very odd that he's still thinking about Megan like that that's no good <laughs> um I think yeah yeah think object cost and then he just starts singing again I think. This is a cover, there it's a parody cover of On the Road to Viridian City from the To Be a Master CD, Pokemon CD. I remember this. Look how dirty that fucking medallion is. I've talked about it before. Look how fucking disgusting that goddamn thing is, dude. Seriously, wiping his ass with it. They didn't give him fucking toilet paper in jail. <laughs> Is that like the one he made out of like gel bubble gum and banana peels? Dude. <laughs> it's it looks pure like it looks banana dean. What do you think that is in the middle? The fucking Cyclops Sonichu, dude? The fucking gemstone in the center, dude? It's probably a ring pop in there, dude. That is the dark. It's a sigil. Huh? The Eye of Star? I don't, I don't know what that is, but I think it's just some bullshit. I don't know, dude. That's the back of it, though. The the front doesn't look quite that bad, but yeah, the back is the most disgusting fucking thing. You just to top off the the fucking shit cherry on the shit Sunday. Shit Sunday. I thought he was gonna throw up a Roman. He's yeah, there. Is he dabbing on him? I can't quite tell, dude. Dabbing on the haters. People had speculated that uh, coming out of jail, he had lost a lot of weight because he was on fucking drugs and he wasn't fed well. But he seems to have gained it all back. Looking quite healthy there. <laughs> quite spry. I mean, other other than like intravenously injecting soy. I mean, look at look at the fucking his proportions. That's true. This is this is the world that liberals want. Yeah. <laughs> like goes into like the Whole Foods and like just tells them like shoot the soy straight into my veins. Yeah, well, we did talk about him leaving the fucking food line with a grocery cart. The people were, like, looking at it. Their commentators were looking at it and being like, these are, like, healthy foods. He's, he's eating healthy now. It's like, no, dude. He's eating tofu and soy sauce and everything in here is to, to generate more estrogen. Wow. That's specifically what he was doing. I, I don't know. That's uh, this is because most people couldn't identify the tofu in there. I could. I've eaten tofu. It sucks. <laughs> it looks like shit. So yeah. So are you guys ready to to go on the road with the uh, the ministry on the roads of the city of Quickville with the Chris Chan ministry oh, yeah. speaking the good word of Chris Chan, Western Muhammad Chandler, Sanatu. 
I'm not at all terrified. No this is this, this is horrifying. Like literally, like imagine showing this to somebody with no contact. So a lot of people were speculating that the people in control of them now are the group Praetor which have been a group that was trying to monetize Chris Chan in the past. And they were actually the ones that introduced Chris to Bella. And that's where all of this information came out and Bella was boiling hamsters and yada yada, whatever the fuck. Um, but I, I'm thinking it's not too, and Prater was also, they were, they were in charge. I don't know if I just said that they're in charge of the fucking Etsy shop, but, um, that's the speculation right now? right now, is that he hooked back up with the group that introduced him with Isabella Janky or whatever. Wait, they're in charge of the, the Etsy shop that he's currently involved in right They now? have been in the past. Okay. I'm, we're not sure if oh. he is now, but like I said, his avatar on the shop has the green screen that he's using here. So I think whoever is doing it is in control of all of it. So if they were in control of the Etsy shop... The most logical thing is that they're they're doing these videos. I don't like, know much about Prater. Like th this is like very much what I'm talking. Like there, the idea there are like these autonomous hacker groups and shit like that. Yeah, there there are, of course there are, but it's like you're talking about, like we know their name and shit. This is CIA. This is a fucking CIA. This is a fucking bed. This is a fucking This is a fucking CIA. I'm sorry. I'm just, this is what's going on. Oh, <laughs> like, maybe not, I, I, I. But this doesn't they're sound. This CIA. sounds less like a fucking CIA group and more like a fucking Discord <laughs> server to me. Uh, <laughs> our Discord maybe server, maybe. Discord. But other than that, <laughs> oh, <laughs> who made Discord? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I, <laughs> Dude, that's the CIA. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. I check it, bro, bro. You're going with the CIA, bro. <laughs> yo, you're, you're, you're the CIA I, trap, bro, I, girl, bro. I, want, the I want CIA to push back on this, but I can't. I, I can say that I'm pretty sure the Praetor guys are doxxed. So if that's the case, if there's, I, I'm there's sorry, more information you're, to go into here. If you're watching this, I'm very sorry. You are not the CIA. Please do not fuck my whole life up. I swear to God, I am a good God-fearing citizen. I voted for Joe Biden uh, three times, and uh, yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, I was one of the dead video. guys that yeah, voted for Joe Biden. Dead. I swear to God, they're the fucking dead. Anytime it's like fucking uh, uh, cervix group, cervix group has box Christian. Yeah, y'all the CIA. I'm sorry. like y'all are not just like some group on the some 4chan group. Y'all are the fucking feds. Like every time, dude. Maybe, maybe. Let's listen to these last forty seconds or so. Wow, I'm more mother there. I got the boundaries set. <laughs> so later, haters, fakers, y'all gone. We're sticking with good positivity, light power, and righteousness. What power? What power? Keep on zapping <laughs> it up. All the good ones, the good life, power, and righteousness. He does like a Mick Crowley esque vibe. So I'm well. not even gonna lie. Well, so it's the pudgy, got. fucking womanly oh, face. On the palms of my hands. The and I, I've given him too much credit. It's like I, it's not like the, the thing is, Christian is fucking uh, estrogen maxing. Like he he does kind of look like a lesbian. When I say that, that's not to validate his womanhood. It's to say he looks like my gym teacher. Like I. He does look like <laughs> You know what I mean? Like Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Male lesbian vibes. He does look like a fucking gym teacher. Holy shit. It's true. It's just true. Alright, let's uh move on to the next video. Fuck it. We're gonna continue doing this bullshit. <laughs> it's great. It's terrifying at the same time. Oh, this is scary. Yeah, we definitely yeah, more, the, the temple. Now, the whatever, mode. whatever little wound or whatever he had under his nose there, that seems to be healing. I don't know if that's still indicative of the antipsychotics yeah. or what. The eyes do look a little doped up. Let's see if he fucking gets some more energy into this one. He's got his crystals. Those are definitely giving him some power. Yeah, it looks like he's on opiates or something. His pupils are real small. He's not on opiates. No fucking way. He's on antipsychotics. He's on He's on that Risper doll or whatever the fuck, dude. Some shit like that. Who knows? Hey, everyone. Jesus Christ. Why don't you chairs. green man die? Oh, he's fucked yeah. up. He's fucked oh, up. He, I, well, hold on, because this is also... Well, hold this is left oh. play. Let's let play. Hey, everyone. Jesus Christ. He must have chair Sanchez Prime here. He did say Jesus, by the way. Wait. 
Don't know why he does that. I think it's because he took Spanish in high school. Whatever. <laughs> and right now, I'm going to set the record straight. So, just so y'all know, straightforward and blunt. Always stay straight. Stay straight. <laughs> to the point. The reason I went to jail, the charge I was charged with, I was innocent. There never, ever, 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 ever was any sense between Barbara and I, period. I was innocent. He's innocent. Does he kind of remind you of uh, David Icke's, like, brainwashed fucking weirdo uh, government interview sometimes? Um... Yeah, but her. I, I was more... I, I can see it. By George W. Bush. Bloody reptiles. Alien. And they touched me in places <laughs> I didn't want to be touched. <laughs> the, the prince of Saudi Arabia made me eat his feces. <laughs> yeah, I can see that with the with the mind controlled sex slave interviews from like the Illuminati days and all that shit. I can definitely see some of that. And you know, he he leans into it with like the new age vibe. There's always like new agey music yeah. happening and shit like that, which definitely takes it to that next level. Um, so yeah, he's denying that it ever happened. Uh, I'm gonna go through some evidence to so that everybody knows it it fucking did happen. But let's yeah, let yeah. the man have his fucking talk. I have a few bullet points to go through anyway. I miss you. I mean, where do we go to end up here? So obviously we got all the hangers and fakers and the toxic sinners that really that tried to manipulate me and so much. I mean, just that was a mess of good grief right there. Why did y'all have to do that? <laughs> you He's so tired, guys. Really Just leave him alone. He is fucking exhausted of the trolling. You can see that. And there's no end to it. His whole life is... It's not like you can be like, all right, well, like, everybody stop trolling Chris Chan. Everything's good. No, like, he trolls himself. He creates the trolling. His life is a That's troll true. at this point. It is. Like, That's all it is. Yeah. All will ever be. Understood me, period. <laughs> <sighs> And just, that was a whole mess up. I mean, shoot. Even y'all of y'all with your freaking smut fictions. I know, I'll num I know some of you out of the minority that are the worst. That are the worst. Out of the majority being actually good. Okay? Hold up. Are you out of the minority? Didn't he make the, 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 like, comics about fucking Megan and shit? Who wouldn't? But he's talking about smut fictions and shit. He made he's a, he's a prevailer. He he is a, a, a fucking connoisseur of smut. He's had dude. It gets much weirder than that, dude. He is he's the father of Sonichu. <laughs> Sonichu and Rose Chu had children. His grandchildren, I guess. One of the Rose Chus that. I don't know what what's the fucking species of these creatures. Um, the female Sonichu, his like that that was the the daughter of Sonichu, like got laid in a comic while she was like canon underage. And I know, like it's hard to, dude. I don't even know, man. I don't even know what to fucking say about this shit. But yeah, he's the king of fucking smut without even realizing it. Most definitely, his granddaughter Hedgehog. Had sex underage <laughs> in Sonichu, the comic book. He made, he made a lot of comic about <laughs> fucking Pikachu Sonic granddaughter getting railed. Disgusting. No, are you <laughs> written those smut fin fiches? You shipped me with Barbara. You shipped me with this. You shipped me with Barbara. <laughs> you shipped me. You shipped me with Barbara. God damn, Is that's so funny. Help made a comic about him fucking. No, 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 no. No, no, no. By people repeating the lie that he had sex with his mother. They have made fiction. Their OC, their fiction, has become true. Because, I don't know, dude. I don't know. But the fact is, when you make fiction, it becomes true in another dimension or some shit, dude. That's the law of karma or something. I mean, he's on to something. It's just that, like, I, yeah, it just yeah. 
unfortunate resulted in him fucking his mom, dude. Dude, uh, I I almost want to blame Family Guy for all this shit. Like, <laughs> like his his whole <laughs> worldview was shaped by Family Guy. He Peter Griffin is his and, messiah. This isn't, and regardless of, of like, I don't even know, dude. He half of the reason he disliked gay people was because there were like jokes in family guy that made fun of like <laughs> he misunderstood jokes that were supposed to make fun of people making fun of gays and took it serious like this is how insane it is i don't even know how to describe this shit he took cartoons way seriously he didn't realize when things were jokes and he took them literally his whole worldview is is built by family guy by pokemon by sonic the hedgehog so it's like Oh, he's taking some of these concepts of like the uh, egregore, the thought form, the way things, you know, manifest the very new age ideas or very, you know, it came from a lot of sources. He's taking the most new age approach possible. Then he's applying it to his, his fucking cartoon worldview. Mm-hmm. It, oh, yeah, man, it's sickening. I think it is. It, it is real though. It is like, that's the thing is like, it's, it's, um, uh, the philosophical concept of a hyperstition of things going from being fictions to becoming reality. Uh, that's a very real thing. And he's probably yeah. tapped into that to a certain degree. It's just that his interpretation of it leads to like, well, my mother is actually me too. And therefore I should have sex. With her. Like, it's just, it's just like some bizarre, it just gets he, he, wires crossed, mm. but he was like on to like, he was on to the fucking, this is like the, the the classic tale of like the magician who like defies his master or something and gets led astray. Like he like was onto the secrets of the universe and then he fucked his mom. <laughs> That's just like Crowley. He was he was almost there and then he fucked a guy in the ass at the foot of a mountain. Yeah, and everything went to shit. He found the truth. The truth is, you have to fuck a, you have to fuck a man in the middle of the desert, and then he has to be possessed by the ancient Egyptian spirit of uh, Iwas. Yep. Yeah. But that's not nice. And I've seen worship. Barbara was definitely not the perfect mother with me. Just it was not the perfect mother daughter relationship there. Period. Just uh, growing up. There was the times of abuse, even though there was the love and caring. He's shitting all over Bar. He's just shitting on the old lady. He's just taking a shit on his mom that he fucking. Molested. It's not too surprising. From jail, he was saying some pretty awful things about his mother. Uh, he was basically blaming her for this whole thing fucking occurring. How do you? Th what do you think of like the rumors that she was like kind of grooming him in some kind of weird way? Grooming no, that once again. No this is the whole thing. These words are too strong. But, yes, yeah, of course. But I just mean of like that she was trying to like that she like said things about how he told he told her that he he fucked a prostitute, and then she was like, "You could have just fucked me" or something like that. Like, okay, well, let's put it this way: <laughs> after so his know. dad died, Barb would request that Chris spoon with her in her bed. Yeah, that's that is uh, light incest. So when you look at that combined, do people always used to make jokes about Chris fucking his mom? Like nobody ever expected it, but everybody would make jokes when, when you look at that combined with Chris's sexual frustration and the jokes that were made in the past, like it starts to really add up how this sort of thing could happen. Like she allowed, you know, up to a certain point and then he felt entitled to that point and like she got what she needed he needed to get what he needed you see what i'm saying and i i think it's it's like this is why barb never wanted to pursue it and this is why the case was dismissed is because it was essentially consensual now you can definitely say that 80 year old Barb was not able to consent or whatever. There's are, there's plenty of arguments like that. Um, yeah. it, that's why this is so theory. difficult. That's why this is so difficult. Yes. She brought it onto herself, but like, does she 
does that mean she deserved it? Like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I, I think that Isabel Loretta Jenke is the reason why we know about this in the first place. And she was the one who, like, started... And she was trying to take that information and give it to someone else to, like, fuck with Chris in some kind of a way. And then it got leaked by other people. That led to an investigation. But that investigation was made off of, like, well, somebody on 4chan said this guy fucked his mom or some well, shit like that. Okay. Very little evidence. So, like, do we have any court documents at all of, like, what actually happened in the courtroom? Because, like, did they even take a rape kit? Or is that something people fucking said? People Here's started the thing. talking about the rape kit. Chris they probably did i think that would still kind of require why? barb to play ball but why would they even take the rape kit in the first like like if 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 there is a rumor on the internet that you raped your mom no no he admitted to it he admitted to it he admitted to it on to the police or to the internet he admitted it uh on the internet and then i'm assuming he admitted it to the police I don't think he admitted it to the police. I, I think, I, he admitted it to the police I think that is, if, if you don't think he would admit it to the police, you don't know Chris Chan. Yeah, he would, <laughs> he would brag about it. He, what he would do is, is he would try kidding. to minimize it in a way that makes him sound fucking insane and guilty. Even that, even that, but I'm saying that like, okay, but we're talking about why this, this whole thing got dismissed. I think that the reason it got dismissed was because it got reduced to internet shit. I think it got. I think the whole thing got reduced to internet. And when it actually came to the courtroom, there was no like there was no, she, one. All she, all she was saying is true. She didn't press charges. She was basically fine. She was basically like in a weird way resolved with whatever happened. And there was nobody like when it came down to like why do we even start investigating it? It's, it's like well because some like CIA's agent's daughter in Texas said that he raped his mom so therefore we have to make it we have to arrest this guy he went to jail for it and everything but the idea of actually yep. convicting this guy and having him go to prison for like a long ass time for it you need you need more than that to like convict someone with rape like you, to even fucking investigate someone with rape it's like you you need like a victim who's saying he raped me or some shit <laughs> all we've got is like somebody well, a bunch of people online i don't it's, really it's like understand your argument i think i think if there is indication that that Chris is having sex with his mother that definitely needed to be first stopped and second investigated yeah. <laughs> and punishment dealt out to some degree. Um, but I'm saying that I'm saying that the investigation itself, like, would, would, would like when you're when you're the detective going in there and shit, it's like all the things you're saying they would run into this brick wall of the mother who is kind of okay with it and also out of her mind. But you and it's have like, to fucking like, medically test her at that point. You have to. I don't think they. I don't think they do. I don't. I don't. Think the, the the. I don't like the the typical reason. Like in terms of what I've heard about rape kits, it's like a woman well, says, "I was but, raped on this." Day. Okay. Well, like, here, 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 here. Let me sense. explain it a different way, dude. First and foremost, First, incest is illegal, so yeah. there are charges just on that. Um, right. this is why it's so awkward. Uh. Now, it can. The thing is, it can be hard to prove rape, but like yeah. it, the reason incest charges exist, I've heard it explained one time, is that because it, it can lead to that rape charge, or at least it gives you something to go off of. Oh yeah. Now incest totally charges, and this is why it's this is so awkward, so is awkward. because the charge he was arrested on is essentially meant for a a parent raping their child right now that's not what they have at all but and how often are people convicted with that on the, in the, that's in a good the question i've heard that i've heard that it's more often than you think i've never seen numbers or anything but i've heard that it probably is actually often. it happens somewhat regularly probably often that often it probably is more often than i think but like um you know now the thing right. is at the at the end of the day the reason that that I think Chris got off is because there are specific um I don't I don't know what to exactly call them their laws if they're whatever the guidelines for for dealing with very autistic criminals. They actually do get off very easy because Virginia has laws he, making he sure that's the case. In his mom. I hear you but be, through all of these factors this this tells me that you know, it needed to be stopped and investigated. They needed to look into Barb. He I don't did think there's serve any time. way to get someone to give you a rape kit. Like, like I don't think if, if you present a rape kit to someone and they don't consent, 
to getting that like you're talking about somebody going into a vagina and fucking looking for evidence there's what, no way to get the police can get that well, that's fine but what, what if she doesn't consent to it and why is she consenting to it she I, doesn't think anything is wrong we're missing a point i'm i'm, I'm stalling on on bringing out some of my evidence because i didn't want to bring it out yet okay, okay. um but I w i'll say that it's this was just a matter of time and I think you could remove Isabella Jackie from the whole situation, and this still would have come out almost in on a, like a, a I, meaningless I amount that. of time later, because yeah. he was bragging about it to other people online without telling them who it was. They would have found out, and I'll, I'll get into that too. But I do want to watch the rest of this. We can fucking okay, go on cool. a million tangents here. In there and throughout, okay. but that was a whole different kettle of fish right there. Uh, but yeah, the bullying, the terrorizing, and all that, they really fucked me up. I feel so... Just enough said right there. But hey, you're never gonna make me commit suicide, period. And that was the attention that Bella had in all her chopped and screwed up recordings with all the attention and manipulating me into that. But hey, I foreknew she was gonna do that. I tested her. At the time, I only, I treated her like, you know, just as a friend, try to get her to be on the good side. But obviously she failed. Just like I foreknew the relationship between Dylan and Taylor, that was not gonna last. He abused her. I gave her support on that God, live stream. This, is like, this is like me when I'm streaming. Support and kindness, because I appreciate her as an artist and an individual, which is more than I could say for Dylan at the time. Uh, but yeah, Bella was going to actually record me and Fifi having done something at the hotel had I actually made it to BabsCon. But fortunately, that didn't quite happen. He's going over all of this fucking insane psychotic shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, how can I catch them up on that thing? And he says some other fucking... <clears throat> so he, he is referring a lot to the Isabella Janky situation. He foreknew what she was going to do. And he... I don't know what the hell. But he's talking about a convention he was supposed to go to where he was going to like have sex with an actual woman who was actually interested in him. I know it sounds crazy. Yeah, but... I've heard about that. And Isabel fucked with them about that somehow. I don't understand that. Well, she was trying to facilitate it for content or oh. whatever. I don't know. Lols. I don't fucking know. He Chris says that she was trying to get him to kill himself. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, uh, that sounds as reasonable as anything. Um. Yeah. So he he refused to fuck refused. the actual like the woman who wanted to fuck him and like went and fucked his mom instead. Whatever. <laughs> It happens. She, she, one way or another, she would have got me into jail or tried to get me to commit suicide on, on the whole different day. But hey, she failed. She didn't do that. I took the initiative in my own hands. I will say this is basically like gang stalking rambling. That This is the, the gang stalking bit too, is that like they're trying to get me to kill myself. Which I'm not, I don't fucking know, man. I don't know what to discount because the thing is like Christian is gang stalked. Gang stalking. Per targeted individuals are probably gang stalked. Whatever, dude. Best of luck to him. So, I let my, I let my, I let divine intervention, timing, and everything just send me, just let me go to jail, spend my time suffering, and spend the time for your sins, you fucking, <laughs> fucking toxic ones. He's pointing directly at you, Paul. Worst, Luck. I worst you... Messiah ever, dude. <laughs> huh? This By far. Not... Ever. He's like, I'll I'll die for your sins and fuck y'all. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> trolls. <laughs> fuck you, trolls. I'll die for you. I meditate and learned everything. I am Jesus Christ reincarnated. <laughs> I am the one avatar of all existence, and I'm gonna see that there is nothing but good and righteousness and light-powered individuals, and encouraging all the new trolls to be good. Period. It's like I'm trying to do in this video and statement right now, saying the record straight. Hmm. But I was proven innocent. And they couldn't place me anywhere, which is why they kept me in jail for so long, because they didn't know what to do with me. They didn't know what to do with Somebody was freaking autistic that you weren't putting your words in. Ish. It, I mean, that's basically true, I think. They didn't know what to do. They just kept me in jail. They, just, they didn't know where to place me. But fortunately, they did know where to place me eventually. So 
That's Wait, what do we do? Do we put him in the fucking mental ward? Do we keep him in fucking <laughs> uh, in like ADSEG? Do we fucking you know go on with the trial? Do we just get rid of the motherfucker? What's the cheapest way to handle this? Like <laughs> dismissed. Happen. I'm safe and doing better. Okay. <sighs> But I did nothing wrong, and only the certain individuals online, they had wrongfully manipulated and controlled me and my own narrative, but no more. I take control of my own <laughs> narrative from now on, not you. Not you lot of haters and fakers. <sighs> I am a much better individual than that. Y'all should have known better of me than that. Than s that is enough with the mislabelings and the misconceptions. Just That's enough. And the whole lot of the set's commentary was me being misled by the suggestion of those individuals, especially those theoretical exes of mine. And the I exes? was proven innocent by court of law. He's talking about trolls that were pretending to be women to make fools. I know, like the fucking... Yeah, wasn't there one that was like a 14-year-old boy? Yeah, well, that's something? the thing. Is yeah. like He's literally, like, you can tell... He he's pissed off at Blue Spike still. Specific, and like I would, I don't know if I, yeah. if I shoved my medallion up my ass, I'd be pissed off too. But <laughs> it's crazy how that shit sticks how with him. Blue Spike at this point, um, twenty-seven. Fuck, dude, I can't do any math right now. You're asking too much of me. Uh, oh, I'm so, I'm just, uh, fuck, man, it's old at this point. It's like thirty. What do you want from me? <laughs> and released simple as that and also just putting this out there just do not be an ableist I mean those of you neurotypical thinking you're able whatever there is at least one thing that is totally disabled about you period so don't do not hate others for things that you are yourself period <laughs> yeah there we're all no retarded to hate on anyone we're all retarded in some or way. even yourself yeah a flaw is a flaw, a blessing is a blessing, and a flaw can be a blessing in disguise. So you meditate on that. And stop hating for such a flaw. Stop the haters. And I am a living, breathing individual, and I am not to be objectified in any way anymore. But yeah. But yeah, in it's that weird. Bella was the real sets criminal in that. She really wanted to try to get me in something. She's a real criminal. That's <laughs> Fucking bitch! Call her out! Call her out! Isabella <laughs> Jenkins! <laughs> She's the real sets criminal, period. She got a whole mess of adulteration and manipulation and things in her own words and attitude and insinuations and everything. Okay? <sighs> But to end this on a more positive note, so the girl y'all had seen me with in the past few weeks, I'll tell you a little something about her. She's a friend of mine, and I refer to her only as Flutter. <laughs> we got the name Flutter. There's a theory uh, that that he put the name Flutter out there, maybe at you know at her discretion, because everyone was calling her Derpy Cabbage. And like maybe they weren't happy with that so it seems this is the part where people start to think maybe the girl is behind it maybe she's working with Prater maybe the I don't know who the fuck knows um yeah and we'll see yeah, why here but it's very careful because she likes Fluttershy okay I met her in Lynchburg she got in touch with me while I was in jail and we managed to meet we managed oh. to bond and connect with each other as friends from the jail letters, she was writing him in jail, and then they met after he got out. And she's oh, really all you gotta do is go to jail, and the government gives you a GF. I don't know, dude. There's you... <laughs> so many ways to do it, dude. Maybe we will find a way for you soon enough. <laughs> and she is literally thirty years old, despite the way, despite her physicality. I... Thirty. Cuts right off. Notice that shit. Right as he gets going, right as he gets hot about it. But anyway. But, and the thing is, they were calling him a pedophile because she looks 12 in some pictures. Some pictures yeah. she would look 40, some thought, pictures she would I look 12. Was a child, yeah. Yeah, so that's specifically, I think, why they addressed that. 
just pretty much straightforward right there letting you know about that and i just felt like i just need to say all that click and you can tell he was getting hot right there he was about to fucking pop off and that's right when it cut almost to protect her because why else would you take it out if you didn't if you're just some troll like you would want that information touch with me when i was in jail and we managed to meet we managed to bond and connect with each other as friends and she is literally 30 years old despite the way despite her physicality but anyway just pretty much straightforward right there letting you know about that and i just felt like i just need to say all that clear the air there is nothing wrong with being associated with me period i am sick and tired of being blocked by anyone including and especially by those <coughs> whom i appreciate and i do have friends that do have great appreciation of me which more than I can say than some. I mean, you all, even Megan Schroeder, had your chance to actually be kind and compassionate and friends with me for a longer run. Oh, dude, he's pissed at Megan. I'd be watching out if I was her. She once told him that she has guns, dude. So stay. I don't know, dude. That's enough said right there. I just felt like I need to get that off. Otherwise, I might have had a sleepless night. <sighs> That's what I was thinking. Just taking a shit. Oh, yeah. So, now one thing we see the, the, um, you know, the quality in editing, quality in scripting, the audio, everything is better. It's better than it's ever been for Chris Chan. Chris Chan is known, if he's left to his own devices, he records on a fucking PlayStation. So we we know that something strange is going on here. It reminds me of a different time, an older time, a better time. Um, so we're going to watch another video and it it will, I don't know, see if you can make some connections to what's happening now. And we'll also enjoy a better era of Chris Chan. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! All right, we're coming to you live from Quickville today. We're over at the Quickville Pavilion. The uh, Hedgehog Boys and uh, Master Christian Mayor. He, uh, they they perform here every Friday night, and uh, it draws a crowd. It's very good, you know. This gets me some uh, business from amongst the population that comes around. <laughs> At the speed of sound, follow my way home. Graffiti wall in the mid in the uh, middle of the uh, city of Quickville in the metropolis. The uh, the uh, children are uh, enjoying it, obviously. This is also part of our beautification project in the city. And we and I gotta say that the uh, project just looks fanta fantastic from here. It all looks very good. I tell you what. Give me the liberty to know, to utter. And to argue according to conscience. Silence you down there. We got a silence you sighting on the bottom. How do you feel about President Obama and his economic policies? I like it. It's, he's doing the smash up job with it. He's uh, getting everybody their money and getting everybody the bang for their buck. How do you feel about President Obama's <laughs> foreign policies with countries like Iran and Iraq? Hmm. Yeah, I think he's doing okay, you know. Uh... I've heard said that this is the greatest satire of the average American <laughs> voter. <laughs> Probably. 
establishing uh, good communications and uh, giving them what they uh, require. Yeah, he's, I think he's doing a very good job with his uh, foreign policies. President Obama, being a family man, what is your opinion on his character? I think he's a regular stand-up family guy. He's a family guy. <laughs> Even at my lowest, I was still a family guy. Timberlake Drugstore. It's been in the uh, family for generations. The uh, only uh, generation that has not been able to run it is the one that went on to a singing career. <laughs> All right, well, since the uh, bars, since the bar law has been repealed, the drinking law, this year is the first bar to open up. The uh, Racha in the city of Quickville. Uh, also goes by the nickname of uh, R2. No time for guessing, follow my blind stare. For the next day, no matter what that may be, take my lead, I'll set you free. Over at downtown Quickville, we honor the uh, death of our dearly departed uh, bodyguard from my Billy Mays. He sacrificed his life in an assassination attempt <laughs> for me, and uh, it is due to be honored in downtown Quickville. We build this building. To be completed, a few yes. more of the uh, towers in the uh, building will be the Billy Mays Tower, and it will serve as the new commercial site, the commercial center. And now, what part of Virginia is this? To our fans, <laughs> what's that? What part of Virginia is this? This is Charlottesville. He's on his way to Charlottesville. Oh, okay. He's made it to Charlottesville. He's it there. looks like a uh, fed fucking... center. Arlington. Yeah, no, um, it looks like this other part of Virginia. Um, shit, I want to say Arlington. No, it's not Arlington. It's. Uh... I'm fucking no. Never mind. So the fucking interesting thing about this video is um, that there's a fucking cameraman. There's there are words on the screen. There is editing. At this time, Chris Chen was using a PSI cam that was broken and always piss yellow. So this was completely out of the ordinary. When this hit, people knew something was strange about Chris. What's what's this? Like, we knew he had sick fucking tattoo sleeves. <laughs> but, man, is he cool in this video. <laughs> hey, Santos, man. Don't you be waggling that cartoon finger around at people. <laughs> hey, Dabonte. Do you wish you were as cool as Dr. Ivo Eggman? Hi, Daddy. He's groovy, man. Peachy Keen. He's always awesome. Wasn't just in a decade. It's forever. It's true. Oh, la la. Now reporting for Space Channel 9. Is that you in that picture? Hey, Cosmos. You wish that I could feel you. Anthony Sullivan. You're nothing without Billy Mays. You're nothing with Billy Mays. <laughs> and if you want to talk about cock wilting, Look at Billy May's memorial right behind me. Rest in peace. Okay, yo, misto. You don't like my beer so much, I'll tell you much. It was a present from Uncle Scrotor. He just, wait, what? His soul patch is a present from Uncle Scrotor? Scrotor. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this is. I guess this is him replying to the haters in the comments or some shit. Telling them that they're all fucking losers, dude. Trolls, haters, sinners. To be saved. Tasmanian devil. Some people have oily skin. It doesn't mean that their hygiene is bad. How about <laughs> instead of the uh, water that doesn't work so well, how about I rub you all over my face? Hey, double CD. Yeah, Robotech era is over. Gundam overshadowed it. Arr, you neck bearded one. Quit lurking in these shadows and step up and be a real troll. <laughs> Hey, Rockman enough. Stop dissing this chick. Man up, will you? <laughs> Captain Dog, Stardate, Valor Fog. Sap Brian again? What's the deal with that? <laughs> I punch you in the face like What's Lila the deal does. With <laughs> hey, 
say, Morden? Yeah, we kissed. But that's not all. I hit that. Like with this. He's talking about his mom. Set me free. Trust me, and we will escape from the city. Hey, I'm not on your side. That was the rules. If you want to see what they really do, give me a sec. <laughs> He's got robo specs. A few thoughts on Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah, Optimus Prime. Uh, I uh, did not really care much for him. Uh, I mean, ever since the movie, he's always hanging around with Sam. You know, he's always hanging around with kids. Somebody needs to call Chris Hansen. <laughs> well, the uh, truth comes out. I've never been autistic. I work 40 hours a week to support my parents. This has all been a trick. You have been trolled. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the crux of it we've seen this before we've seen videos with editing that was too good for chris basically being no you have been trolled it was all a ruse and now he's doing the same bit after he fucked his mom hole <laughs> what the fuck dude it's this it's rolling and trolling all over again. They're taking him out, dude. They're taking him out for fucking Long Island iced teas. Goes down salty, man. They're fucking having him fuck his mom, boil hamsters. And it's all been the CIA all along. <laughs> CIA <laughs> And to the silly trolls everywhere for the many lulls you have provided, thank you very much, dude. I was not retarded. I didn't fuck my mom. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's rolling and trolling all over again, dude. Okay. Fuck, man. <laughs> this we're taking this Chris Chan shit way further than I ever intended, to be honest. Let's uh let's keep it up. Why not? I do. I want to read these messages that Noel had received before any of this news broke. When Chris Chan was just bragging, he was he was bragging about his love life to Noel, the owner of Kiwi Farms. So this is from July fifth, twenty twenty one. Now, I, and this is this is all Noel from here on out. Now, I also have a major update to share with you, strictly confidential. The, the past week up to Sunday the 27th has been a major game changer. Uh, oh, this is actually, this is a, this is the message from Chris. I'm sorry. Um, strictly confidential. Strictly, strictly confidential. This calls for a fucking silly Chris Chan voice. The past week up to <laughs> Sunday the 27th has been a major game changer for the positive with me. I'll tell you this in strictest confidence and trust. I do not want the word of this on the Kiwi you're going public. Hmm. But I had sex with someone last week. Someone of this half of our universe. I work thoroughly and compassionately with her beforehand. Hmm? And at present. She's physically older than I. And this is... He's saying that he's having sex with someone. It's a mystery person at this point. It's a mystery. Nobody knows. It's a mystery. She's physically older than I. If heard, one might say it's something out of an anime or fan fiction. But yeah, yeah. keeping her safe as well. Also, next appointment with my doctor is on the 20th, so I'll get checked then to be safe. Condoms are being used in the intercourse. <laughs> Goes on. This, this relationship was something I've extensively given much, much deep thought and was in myself. I've foreseen this among the infinite possible outcomes long ago. I no longer believe in labels that would hinder, and I don't choose, I don't listen to those shadows. This was of my own choice and acceptance. Hmm. And I have no regrets. This feels right and good with I and her. I, now, notice like little things like this relationship was something I have ex extensively given much, much deep thought. Like he had lots of time to consider this relationship. Mm -hmm. 
Null asks, how can I do a null voice? Can I do like a voice crack? How can I make my voice crack? I can't. I won't do that yet. I'll consider that for the future. Really? How, really? How you? How do? I'm trying to. I'm trying to transition in voices here. I just want to do Chris Chan all the time. Really? How'd you meet? Let's do a normal voice. Well, I met her a while ago and was not fully aware at the time. And my ally deity has guided me to seek her out and make things go further with great effort. We have talked on and off during the time in person. Behind a considerable camouflage she was, but she was honest in her emotions. And she wanted to be with me as well. Hmm. Mutual feelings <laughs> on good rapport. This relationship has been from the start, offline and in person, I assure you. So this relationship from the start, it's all been offline and in person. He met her in person. <clears throat> do you have a picture of you and this girl, by the way? Oof, pressing hard for details. I do have photos of my lady friend, but I feel it too personal at this time. Hmm. I did mention she was older than I. She's in the over 50s, and she definitely does not want to be spread around. As one of my more curious followers may have found through my Amazon by now, I even recently purchased a valuable and informative book to add additional guidance. You bought a book that was like How to Fuck the Elderly off Amazon. <laughs> I don't know what the title of it was. I don't know how to look it up. But like this is this is the case I'm making. In case because I have seen people out there who doubt like maybe he was innocent. He got released. He's denying it. No. No, 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 no. He bought the book and had to fuck old people. He was bragging about this to Null before anybody knew about it. That's the point I'm making here. That's the point I'm making here. I've found great appreciation for her in reading her deeply and in listening to her stories and life adventures. Her high school days were quite fun for her. An intellectual she is. Worked a lot in numbers and accounting. Uh, Barb has a degree in accounting or some shit. <clears throat> Also, you may know what I've told you of my late friend so far and in future. I kind of want to, you to figure it out for yourself. As also the few others I've confided strictly with this detail. Figure it out for yourself. So he's inviting it. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, he's like bragging about it. And that's the thing. It's like people who do these horrible things, like they say they want to get caught to some degree. Yep. <clears throat> Don Lynch and Wildcat are the other two who have additional clues as well. I've mentioned this to my doctor as well without mentioning her name directly at all in any event. I will see my doctor on the 20th, so I will get tested to confirm lack of STDs then. So this is all about wow. his mom. This is the I just want to make it very clear that he was bragging about fucking his mom like uh, yep. weeks before people fucking found out that he was fucking his mom. There was only a matter of time till this shit hit. It was not just something that, that Isabella Janky created. This was a monster, a demon of Chris Chan's own <laughs> conjuration. So we'll go from that. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you a bone here. I'm gonna throw you a bone here, Jack. I did it. Okay. I did it. <laughs> What's the bone? I found the Freemason connection. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> I did it. All right. Um, let's check this out, dude. I, I am in. I'm on Sonichu.com, the quickie, the 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 Chris Chan Sonichu wiki, under mm -hmm. the Barbara Chandler uh, article or whatever. Jerry Harmon is listed here. Jerry Harmon is. I don't know if it'll say it here. She's like he's like the the third husband that Barbara had. <laughs> so. Walter Jerome Jerry Harmon Jr. was Barbara's mm. former lover and the alleged sin sinister stepfather of Cole Smithy, Chris's older half brother. Jerry was born on July first. Who's Cole Smithy? Cole Smithy is Chris Chan's half brother. You, do you know anything about Cole Smithy? Yeah, he he's a, a movie <laughs> critic. He was he was the only guy who gave Toy Story a bad review, and that's what he's known for. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, some shit like oh, that. I don't know family. if it was the first one or what the fuck it was. I don't. I don't have no idea. He's he's significantly older than Chris. Okay. I think he's like sixty. Okay. So anyway, light ruined. <coughs> oh, my throat's all fucked up. That guy caught a that guy caught a stray bullet. Got okay. Cole. R.I.P. Cole, Cole Smithy. That's a whole other fucking thing. <laughs> That's a whole other deep dive. We don't got time for that one. On to to Jerry Harmon. 
Jerry was born on July 1st, 1931 in Springfield, Massachusetts, but grew up in Millboro, Virginia, and later Richmond. Jerry's father died when he was 18 months old. Much like Bob, uh, the, the next husband, Chris Chan's father, Jerry had a technical Jerry background. Had technical. He had graduated from Capital Technology University uh, in Laurel, Maryland, and worked as a broadcast engineer at a local radio station. In April 1951, Jerry fathered a child out of wedlock uh, with some other fucking woman. This is, it just has his whole bio, man. Imagine like you're some guy who just, who's in the fifties and you're on the Sonichu wiki. It's mind boggling. I didn't even realize how much detail there was here. Oh, oh no. <clears throat> He's a Freemason though. He is a, a Freemason. According to Cole, Jerry was a combat medic during the Korean War before switching his role to train his soldiers in specialized combat techniques such as decapitation using piano wire, with watermelons standing in for actual heads during this training. He was also a captain in the Civil Air Patrol and would pilot planes during and after the Korean War. One time he was injured after crash landing his plane during a, a fighter pilot mission in Korea. So I feel like uh, along once you have like the Freemason part, you combine that with like the, the military experience... You kind of are the kind of guy, yeah, dude. You're the kind of guy who might want to to uh, influence Barbara to father the Antichrist, or to smother the Antichrist, to give forth the Antichrist. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're on to something yeah. here, right? I'm not just being schizo, right? Oh, a being schizo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was grasping at straws just tr trying to find any Freemasons in this whole fucking thing, and I did. <laughs> give me goddamn credit. Oh, yeah. They're not hard to find. They're fucking everywhere. That's that's the point. Yeah. You know. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but but to, okay. to uh to what you were going off about before, I don't think that Isabel, like that th this 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 gets at the heart of like the way that I think that the way I view conspiracy theories is very. I, I, I have a psychoanalytical kind of deconstruction. I mean, like it's a fucking pretentious ass thing to fucking say, but but like I I I think that conspiracy theories like serve this purpose psychologically for people that basically like they make they make the world simpler. They they make it very easy to like you know say like this person the these people behind the veil did everything. These reptilians were behind it or whatever. But like for me, conspiracy theories actually make things more complicated. Yeah, and they make it more like it's like when you the fact. Yeah, I do think that Isabella Loretta Janky basically isn't necessary for uh, Christian to fuck his mom. But I think that Isabella Loretta Janky is trying to prove something to her fed father Maybe, and the that's fed. Possible. That I think she's trying to get initiated, and she's basically taking this opportunity to create a psyop. Create, um, and then I'm stealing this idea from uh, Saturnalia Sundown, the uh, Twitter page, um, Saturnalia Sundown. But he basically was like, this is baby's first psyop, basically. And yeah. that, that she was yeah. trying to like commit her first psyop and uh, program this guy. And she maybe wanted to kill him. Maybe she wanted him to kill I, himself. Yeah, I think that's I believable. I, I want to cut you off. I found the shit I was looking for. I, I want to go over this okay. before I, I'll go, uh, go over, yeah, yeah. So. Now, this is Cole Smithy. I grew up in an abusive household with Barbara and my former stepfather, Jerry, where physical and mental punishments ran the gamut from bare-ass beatings to cold showers to bizarre scenarios acted out with glee by two deeply neurotic adults. Even at a very young age, I knew that they would abandon me. They were both irresponsible and incompetent parents who exposed me to traumas that I would rather not remember. So was Cole uh, Smithy the prototypical Chris Chan? They didn't get it right the first time. They tried to give him the satanic ritual abuse, all the trauma-related mind control. They tried to break his mind into a bunch of different pieces and build it back up as the perfect mind control MK Ultra slave. And they failed with Cole. What they perfected in Chris Chan. So, Very so it says Very that, uh, yeah, it, Cole talks about being part of his father's magic act where they would go to, um, to mental asylums and stuff and do magic acts for the, for the mental patients, which also sounds very MK ultra. So according yeah, to Cole, yeah. Jerry was a professional magician for decades since he was 20, was a dedicated Freemason, was an active member of the invisible lodge. Ooh, spooky. The Invisible Lodge. The Invisible Lodge is, it is an honorary, uh, an honorary branch of Freemasonry that is just for, uh, magicians, prestidigitation, shit like that. 
Mm. That's but weird. It, it's but not like you just know. you just automatically get that if you like show up and I'm I'm a magician. You have to be a member of the Blue Lodge. You have to be a Master Mason. You have to have third degree. And so then, let me okay. get this right: the, the magical occultists who are casting a curse on our society to destroy our minds and like fuck us for life are also creating a fake magician guild within their fucking like. <laughs> They're doing the like pick a card, any card bullshit. <laughs> like, the the top of, like fucking children and like sacrifice. No, I mean I want to go over what what Cole said in in that quote. He says bare ass beatings, cold showers. It just gets weirder. Okay, bare ass beatings. Like that's I I can see that. Um, weird, but okay. Cold showers. Like that's fucking bizarre that's like a torture tactic. yeah it yeah. sounds almost like waterboarding like it's, we're talking about a kid here so it's like you know degrees but like yeah it sounds like something like that and then they talk he talks about bizarre scenarios acted out with the glee by two deeply neurotic adults i have no fucking idea what that could possibly mean it sounds like and gaslighting this is where, and... this is where it gets really creepy when you think about the shit of like barb saying yeah. like oh chris you could have fucked me if you wanted to like, what if Barb, like, I don't know, this is not necessarily my paradigm, but what if Barb is, like, the fucking secret evil, I don't know, I'm victim-blaming like shit, but what if she's the fucking secret evil demonic entity behind this whole thing, is just saying, like, fuck me, son, fuck me, son. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, like, he's like, it's hard, the whole thing is already black pilling. But if you just add that element to it, it just becomes like the most horrifying story ever told. That like actually she wanted it and actually she was abusing him. I don't know. She's like crawling on the wall, like yelling that at him. <laughs> she just like all his bed on the ceiling. <gasps> Fuck me, son. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> we'll end your love quest right I, now. I will, I will I mother. Am. I will, I am mother. A boyfriend free girl. I will, mother. I will fuck you to the extreme. I am the boyfriend free girl. <laughs> We've been looking for this whole time. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Open holes. Open seats and all these holes. So, I, I went to I'm at freemason.com it says joining the invisible lodge the invisible lodge international is a one of a kind organization and therefore has a unique membership requirement a man must meet to apply for membership first you must be a master mason in good standing with current blue lodge status then you must prove to the invisible lodge directorate board that you are a magician or a pursuer of allied art form it is satis satisfactory to be a proven professional, semi-professional, or amateur ma magician, uh, magic or related, uh, amateur in magic or related arts, with evidence of performance, authorship, yada yada. So yeah, that's how you do it. You have to be a, a third degree Blue Lodge Master Mason in good standing. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a, a comic called The Invisibles that talks about the Invisible College, and it's like this interdimensional college where you go to learn to be part of a secret society that is fighting an uh, ongoing battle with the Demiurge, which is what I believe the Freemasons believe they're actually doing. And this was a, this comic was part of the basis for the Matrix movie, among other things. I don't know. Maybe that's just a completely meaningless tangent. But Maybe they did make you think about it. Disclosure. Soft disclosure, yeah, I think, I think it was, and yeah, it's made by Grant Morrison, who is like kind of like the the grand magician of uh, other than Alan Moore, the grand magician of comic books, basically, who just like writes about weird occult Freemasonic shit and all of his comics. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, because like it's the idea that they take like an uh, an event that's going to happen and they'll like put it in media that's like so pointless that. You would never think that that's predicting something, but it like well, he's also it's your way of like, like he's the reason, the he got me into chaos magic. He's yeah. he's a chaos magician. He's in a, he's into chaos magic. He's into Crowley, all this sort of stuff, and he acts as a gateway to all of that stuff. And, and he got me into a lot of that stuff. So I mean, I mean, I'm not really beyond thinking that that is some kind of weird psyop that I was a victim of. I'm a victim of the psyop. The comic books. We're all victims of psyops. So we just don't know it. 
We've spent this entire episode basically talking about Chris Chan, which I did not really expect to do. I feel like we're we're obligated to get into something paranormal. Cyberwolf? Something. Cyberwolf? Huh? Cyberwolf? No, Cyberwolf? I don't I don't know what any of that shit is and I don't want to talk about it. I don't you know, never heard of the guy. <clears throat> um so I was I was talking I was, to Alb recently. To Alb. Our good friend Alb. And he was saying that Swedish like man. there there must be like a demand for paranormal content out there. Like in America, everybody believes in ghosts. Everybody believes in this stuff. Like, so then I'm thinking to myself, like, why haven't we, what, what like big, first of all, can you think of a single like big paranormal stream that gets like a lot of viewers? The only one I can think of that gets a shitload of subscribers is like bedtime stories or shit. Yeah, like that. but I'm talking about like a live stream, like like this sort of format. I'm not talking about like edited edited video essay type things. You have to have a cult. You have to have some weird yeah. cult where like you're like telling people about their chakras. But that's people. true. But at the same time, I I can think of multiple small paranormal streams. I can think of a lot of them. If there's that, and they all get views, not many, they're all pretty low, but they all seem yeah. to have uh, an audience base. So if that's true, so that's true, why aren't there like big paranormal streams doing this stuff? You know, that are like shills, whatever the fuck with check marks, but it, they just don't like, like exist. Game. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like Windigoon's like the closest thing to that, and he just does like edgy stuff now. He doesn't even do like a lot of paranormal. And then, then weird. start to think about it more. What, what fucking like big paranormal things are there on like TV or streaming? Only a few. There used to be a lot in like the ancient alien yeah. days, and that was at the peak. You could think of like a bunch off the top of your head. And now, part what, was of that, like a, what, was, what was that yeah, fucking series? Yeah, there are a million of them. There's a million yeah. of them. Fucking Monster Quest, Ghost Adventures, yada yada. Go on forever. There used yeah. to be a ton of them. Now, I have heard it said that History Channel, like these shows, didn't stop because they ran out of content or people stopped watching. History Channel specifically wanted to go in a different direction, so that's why we don't see it on there. But like, right. still, when I think about it, there's only like a few people who do that stuff, like that are big on, on like uh, streaming services or anything like that. Like Zach Baggins is like the only one I can think of. Mm. Why yeah. is that? I I personally I I think it's because all of this stuff leads to conspiracies. It all leads to religion, all of it, right? True. I don't yeah. think you can do yeah. a paranormal thing without it eventually leading there. And I don't think the people in charge want us considering any of that stuff. It's definitely not the conspiracies. But I don't think they yeah. want us even considering our own deaths, our own mortality. Yeah. Right? They want you to think like you're just going to be uh, like a fun uh, Funko Pop collecting uh, Essentially. toy jack all the time. Yeah. Essentially. Well, the idea, the idea, I mean, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm going to go on a weird tangent with this, but like, like with with the with the fucking um, vax and shit, you know, it's like the, the, this idea that this vax is gonna have like some kind of permanent. I don't know. Maybe this is a weird way of taking it, but like, um, if if a, a scientist isn't telling you this is gonna fuck you up, you know, and you don't believe in the soul, then the the idea that there's any kind of a permanent. I don't know. Maybe that's that's a dumb way of, of seeing. It. I mean, I think I think yeah, the, the back stuff is. Demonic. Yeah, it's like there's something demonic in this thing. It's like, oh, that's just stupid Christian bullshit. The, the cow she told me that it's fine. And like, you know, with with, with a, a whole bunch of different things, it's like if, if there's no soul, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing like it. Whereas I think that like the the kind of damage they're really doing to us is primarily spiritual. But if you don't believe in the spirit, then in, who gives a fuck? You, then you start thinking about the fucking uh, microplastics or whatever. But yeah. Dude, you can't yeah. even talk about Bigfoot without getting into metaphysics anymore. It can't yeah. be done, honestly. Yeah. If, if, if you don't do that, like you're literally just like going out of your way to avoid the topic because everyone's talking about right. it. Yeah, because yeah, so, that's what that's what like when Pilates was getting old with his stupid shit, he uh he started talking about like interdimensional Bigfoot and stuff, and that was like because he couldn't ignore it anymore, like almost. Yeah, 
And then Elok was well, on the well, aliens and the, interdimensional uh, shit. Yeah. With, with the current uh, climate and the war, we talked about, you know, Israel, Palestine. Um, I noticed that the debate is completely secular. It's not, it's about like Jews as a kind of like a hot button issue of like Jews are people who are discriminated against by anti Semites, etc. It's not about God and the fact they worship God or they practice a, a religion based on the Torah and the Talmud. It's about the fact that they have a history that involves being discriminated against or Muslims have a history of being whatever. It's not, has nothing to do with the fact that both these groups worship God in different ways and like have different interpretations of God or like which side God is on or any, like all that shit is out of the question. It's just about like, well, yeah, you know, this side says that it's okay to kill these people. This side says, but, yeah, kill these I mean, people. this is why it won't change until it's too goddamn late. Um, right. yeah, yeah. most definitely. I steer it back onto the, the, the fucking paranormal content, dude. I want to show you. I hope that I can get away with this on like YouTube wherever I'm posting this. I'm going to show you the, the trailer of the hot new paranormal show they're pushing for the people. We're going to fucking, we're going to get hyped for it. We're going to consume content. We might get get our boys. live reactions for enjoying this content. <clears throat> this is the, the official trailer for the new show Living for the Dead on Hulu. This is a quarter mile down. You will hear things. How many people died here? Oh, God. I'm feeling a cold chill going up my leg. Went <laughs> up my ass. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of nice. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? We are paranormal investigators. Oh, God. We're gonna figure out what's here and what we can do about it. So if, if, if you wanted the, the, the queerest paranormal show you've ever fucking seen in your life, it's right here. They said it. I didn't have to do it. They said it for me. This is the queerest yeah, shit joke. you've ever I seen in your fucking and life. I went right to it. That's what's so fucking funny. I made a joke like a man. Watch as our team of experts crisscross America through the unknown and beyond. Look at me now, look at me this is where we're fucked. Yeah. I got to come out. Huh? This is where we're, like, we're, this is stuff, like, the stuff we're doing is, like, this gets, or, like, paranormal contact, this, this is getting, this is going to be, like, lumped in with being fucking gay. Well, it's everything, gonna... that's, that's the, that's the fucking reason for the season, brother. You need cruising for a bruising, brother. And for talking to dead people. Uh, they're, they're trying to do for years, they're trying that dude looked like fucking, uh, King Cobra, bro. He does look like <laughs> That's King Cobra <laughs> after a shit after a shower, dude. I think it looks like every dude hanging out at a brewery talking about <laughs> fucking uh fucking critical race theory. Waiter for thirty one years. You've got Miss Alex, the tech guru. Oh, the tech Logan's one of the best mediums I've ever seen. Roz is our researcher. Juju is our resident. Wait, well you can't say that. A pretty simple seance setup. All the women <laughs> Might be yeah, I guess they just had a black there was It's the queerest, <laughs> the queerest paranormal team that's ever existed. That's what they refer themselves <laughs> to. Bring over me. It's moving. We are not here to provoke spirits. Is there anybody up here with us? Spirits. Don't move. I hear wow, gay people. Oh my god. You'd believe this place is haunted. <laughs> oh, they're taking our jokes. Our jokes aren't even hitting what? anymore. Yeah. What was that? The clowns aren't really bothering oh me. It's the bedspread that I find horrific. Oh my god. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm making you sit through this. I'm not cutting this off. Six sense is telling you to turn around. Turn around. <laughs> These things are not permanent. There will be a payoff to this. Of a good life. Wait, they got a priest? They got a priest? A queer priest. <laughs> they got they believe in queer jesus yeah I hear, get out. all the ghosts are trans someone sitting in the chair like laughter trans ghosts oh she got she it's got the same games till someone gets possessed when a There's when a, a trans person kills themselves are they a trans ghost <laughs> here to yeah. give voices to those who are no longer with us we're here to make the lives of people who are experiencing it better the transitioning to ghost <laughs> You're the one who wanted to feel a spirit. You got your wish, baby. I did say I wanted to feel something from a man Whoa. while in Vegas. I guess that's what I got. That's the most disgusting yeah, fucking thing I've ever heard. Yeah. What do you think about yeah, the trans ghost? That's actually, a, that's actually a really a really good point. Um, in a weird way. Is it? So like, well, I mean, no, but like I can extrapolate a good point out of it. Well, um, but like, 
<laughs> Hold on. Before I, we can't even go on before I restore humanity's hope. There's another show out there. Another show for people like you and me. Real men. Real men. Where we go and find these fucking creatures, dude. We don't go Long fucking spread. Eagle. We don't fucking go spread eagle, eagle on the hotel thunder. fucking bed on the fucking trailer, dude. We're fucking, we're taking it to Bigfoot. We are taking it, dude. And mountain monsters will be our savior, dude. It's still out there, dude. I believe. We don't know what we have in store for us. Wild dogs have ravaged each one of the people. I'm determined, and this whole team is determined. We're gonna get them. What the fuck? That's a Bigfoot. We're gonna get to the bottom of the most feared creature in all of Cherokee folk. The spear finger. It's time for us to get this hunt started. Get Silver gun ain't normal bear. Whatever did this, the son of a bitch is a mountain monster. Whatever did this is a son of a bitch. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jeff. Here we go. We lost. Oh, yeah. Come here. Get some of this, Jeff. Bill. <laughs> got something up on the ridge. Oh. Ah. Hold on. Oh. Jeff, you don't believe me. <laughs> We're on a TV show. TV show? What TV show? Whoa, watch my toes! Tony yeah, we got the hell in a cell! Get the big button there! Hell in a cell! You're raising the game! Damn! What the are you even saying? Good stance. You get all fatty. Give it a little shake. Muscle power! What'd you learn? Just the boys. That's what I'm doing. A tree knock. Girl. Oh, I snagged your bag. Did you say you snagged your bag? That hurts. <laughs> New season of Mile Monsters. Well, All right. We're going to get that motherfucking Bigfoot. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> what the hell is that? You want to go get a burrito later? Yeah. <laughs> I looked up. <laughs> This large figure was standing there staring at me. This thing's evil. <laughs> this here's a skinwalker, sir. You can't Gang! Hey! Hey! Oh. That's the man in the black cloak. Ah! What the hell? Look! The fuck? <laughs> what was that? There's answers there to be had. And you're the team that can get them. There there. What the? What the shit? Steal. What the fuck is in there? What is this for Blair Witch IRL? Something written in blood. <laughs> it says motherfucker, Chris Jane's in there. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Listen, I hunt monsters. I ain't into this ghost bull crap. There's something mad happened in here. This ain't good. Holy shit, it's real. We didn't They're attack. out on the sale. We're going to get the death count, Huck. We knew this quest. To get to the bottom of the spear finger was going to be unpredictable. How? Oh, what the? But no one has ever dead. seen this coming. No, oh, no, what did they do to Bill? The just happened. <laughs> no, Huckleberry. I love it. Huckleberry. <laughs> Huckleberry. I got to get out of here. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> the hell is that? It would be really cool if those people from this show hunted the people on the other <laughs> show in Minecraft. <laughs> Dude, Mountain Monsters is so fucking dope. Every episode, they find that motherfucker. And they have and guns. I mean, there's a werewolf now! Blam, blam, blam. <laughs> It is so it's fucking good. It's coming right for us. And dude, it'll be like, they made Huckleberry feral. He ran off into the woods covered in mud. And they have to go find him. And then there's um, one episode where, where, where Huckleberry, no, Huckleberry's going for the fucking dog man. He's climbing up a tree to find the dog man. And the dog man pisses all over his face. He's like, Burr, Burr. <laughs> and they have to take him out off scene to the hospital. I what I was gonna say before was that we were talking about how um, they don't want us to believe in the soul or anything like that, and theoretically the trans debate, all of that shit, like what they're basically saying is that this is a person who was 
born in a man's body with the soul of a woman or vice versa like yeah, whatever you know crap. essentially but they don't they don't want us to believe in a soul either you know um yeah. i don't know it's it it i don't know there, there there's a notion of the kali yuga that it's like everybody is born into the wrong body and that would kind of explain this whole trans like phenomenon and all this kind of stuff but like it's a spiritual explanation and they basically want us to believe that there's are spirit so, there's, so the explanation has to be like a psychological one anyway that, that that's just my take on on a lot of this stuff like it's like if we had we if we believed in souls if our society believed in the soul you know and we would ca- kind of could have a conversation about it it would kind of make sense of a lot of the shit that we're freaking out about yeah i I, I've said it before. I think every great society, you know, always had a marriage of philosophy, religion, and science. Yeah, and it is because of that marriage that is how how you know like you're on the right track because they all kind of agree. If they all disagree with each other, you were left with nothing. Right. That's and you got the, the you know basically the the setup for a. Uh, entang- like a like a battle between them, basically. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I, I I would like to to just go on and on about how they're trying to repress like knowledge of metaphysics and the soul and the nature of reality and all of that stuff. And I frankly, I haven't done enough research into it because I I think like the things in like quantum physics very much point to that. So we have we have reality yeah, yeah. requiring reality. an observer. So I mean, just on a, like a basic level, it's like there are things in the universe that are not being actively observed by by a consciousness, right? Like if we go by like you know mainstream scientific understanding, there's like a a speck of dust on the dark side of the moon where nothing is living, nothing is is experiencing it, right? Right. So it's like if there's nothing there to 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 observe it to manifest it, like does it actually exist if it's not being observed? Um, but you also believe that matter is sentient, don't you? That's that's the key. Is I think everything has has some level of spirit, of sentience, of soul. If everything has some degree of sentience and every and some of soul. Then everything is also an observer. Exactly. So the speck of dust you're talking about on the dark side of the moon actually is being observed by other specks of dust. That's what I, that's moon. what I'm saying. But like that that that's not to give necessarily sentience to specks of dust. That is to say that whatever God is yeah, yeah. is in everything. That is intrinsic. Right. It's intrinsically in everything, and everything is yeah. essentially God. Right. And that's why we right. are creators in his image because we are constantly right. manifesting. We're, we're creating his will in real time. I, um, I, on a linguistic level, I basically call that multiple gods, but yeah, I, yeah, but we could all, we could call all so everything. Why, why, I, I don't, and here's the thing. This is why I think uh, labels like polytheist and monotheist and pantheist, right. they can be so useless sometimes. Because if you look well, at a, if you look at a Hindu, Hindu Hindus are clearly polytheists, right? But right. like it depends what school of thought. If you ask someone from uh, like the Vedanta tradition, like they might say like, no, Krishna is the only God, and all of them are manifestations of Krishna. Krishna is the absolute right. reality, and is God. it sounds like monotheism, right? But then it's like if you have polytheism, let's just say it's polytheism, <laughs> then you have all of these gods representing. Um, different forces and all that stuff and everything has its own god everything has that spirit really the line from polytheism to pantheism is like blurry as hell i can slip i can slip from one to the other so easily it it only becomes relevant when you see the conflicts and contradictions like for instance that um and and those contra those are all manifest in man that like basically like you know, one man goes to war over his passions and another man tries to calm his passions. And like, there's a God that is trying to soothe you and make you passionless in like a Buddhist kind of way. And there's another God that wants you to, to kill for in the name of your faith. And that might be a Muslim or, or a Christian, you know, sort of interpretation of your spiritual path. But like, uh, but like it, it, the the big ways that manifest for me are where um, 
the, this idea within monotheistic religions that God is all powerful and God is right and good. If God is right and good, nothing, there would be no error. There would be, there should be no error. The fact that there is error, the fact that there is evil, the fact that things go wrong, to me suggests evidence of multiple powers that are in contradiction with each other, that are that are fighting over us and fighting over the universe. But I they, think they can, all, they can all come from the same source and, and that, still be, that's the same way that we come from the same source and we're in contradiction with each other. That's that's there what I'm saying. From the same source and they're still but they're 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 one. At, at, at their base but they have in their manifestation they are divided like the Tao is like you know it, without desire um there there is this oneness and with desire you see these manifestations that are not one that are all separated no the division i i would say no i think um um where am I going with this? So there's so much to even grasp here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I think that like these are are the many faces of God. There are masks that sure. we wear. Yeah. When I when I see a uh, divinity and I see evil in the world, it is always through the actions of men. Right? Yeah. Like like these these are are it's. It's so hard because, like, they are clearly they are. representations of the conflicts that go within, go on within our souls. But then they're they're also representations of of like natural forces. It it tells me that everything, that everything is a cycle. It seems to me that it it, ha it goes, it's it's like ones and zeros in binary. It's it's singularity and then it separates and then it goes back and then it separates and right. like i i feel like that cycle might might be the most natural thing ever yeah. and it is understanding that cycle that that allows people to give up attachments i believe hmm. it's like when you realize that everything is nothing is ever gained or lost you know no matter whether it's a, a zero or a one like at the end of the day like everything goes back to source and everything is already whole. Yeah. Now that's very much Buddhist. I would also say that it's, it's from like, uh, if you look at like the gospel of Thomas in the, uh, apocryphal Stoicism. works, what's that? Stoicism do Greek. Stoicism. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the, the yeah. aspect that I think is perennial is, is mm -hmm. that like there is a source where everything mm -hmm. is, it all, all is at once simultaneously. Yeah. And it's like, when you understand that, then like you can start to feel that within yourself. Then you can start to get rid of the attachments, knowing that like they, they simply are, you know, it, like this is the type of thinking that leads someone to start being like, well, I don't have to be ever emotion. I feel just because I'm hungry. Right. doesn't mean I have to eat. Just because I'm horny right. doesn't mean I have to fuck. Just because I'm angry mm -hmm. doesn't mean I have to punch a hole in a wall. Mm -hmm. And like these, this is the lesson that I think is deprived that that children today are deprived of. That if children could right. start to understand these concepts at a much younger age, maybe they wouldn't act out so much. Right. And it, like well, it is. Yeah. This brings me back to the marriage of philosophy, religion, and science. Is like in the cultures right. where these things were working in harmony. They taught the kids this shit. They taught kids basic logic. That was the first thing they taught yeah. kids. Um, well, the demiurge, um, the the myth of the demiurge, and I'm not really saying that I necessarily subscribe to this myth, um, but he's supposedly the blind god, Yal Yal de He's the blind god who believes that he's the true god because he's blind to the fact that there's anything beyond him. And I think that 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 sort of that sort of myth kind of shows the exact the exact kind of separation I'm talking about. Whereas if, if, if he was able to see, he would know that he's just one part of God. But because he believes that he is the God and there's nothing beyond him, he ends up acting in a way that is ultimately contrary to the will of God and um, and basically separating man from god separating us into se dividing the world into the spiritual world and the physical world dividing well, us i think world. what this is talking about 
I think it's very much talking about attachments. It's talking about yeah. material attachments. Now we know a yeah. lot a lot of Gnostics were ascetic. Um the Th these ideas about like the material world being evil and all of that the demiurge creating the material world i think it's it's about distracting you from your true nature right so like it's it's very similar to the way attachments are talked about in eastern traditions now you talk about this one-eyed god who doesn't who it, that is that is the the that's where man is that's man who's unaware of his true nature and he's going on creating this material prison unknowingly and constantly right. right the one who sees himself as the only god like that's us the, this is why i think if, if somebody is more interested in watching an nfl game than than knowing god if someone's more interested in, in watching fucking in the, playing a video game than knowing god you're essentially a satanist to me mm. right because you're elevating the human desires above god and mm -hmm. it is those material attachments that are the the trappings of of the material world like in it, the bible says that um what does it say it says that that satan is the god of this world god. that they're right. worshiping the devil and I, I essentially think it is these attachments in in uh hinduism and in buddhism it's called maya the illusion it's all an illusion right. and if you're if you're only focused on the illusion it only creates separation from god yeah yeah um yeah that, that that's that's really interesting and um that's what trips me out with like for instance theosophy you know theosophy seems that it seems like they're they're saying that the serpent is the true god and the um the god of the bible is the false god but then you know there are certain christians who end up sounding like Gnostics, like like Paul and Thomas, to a, to a certain degree, you know, they, they end up sounding like Gnostics in the way that they depict, you know, God. And then also the early Gnostics, I think, were Jewish. Some of them were Jewish. No, well, um, all that's a whole other thing. Gnosticism is a, it's a catch-all term for many, many different early Christian groups, most of which were Jewish. Right. Yeah. Right. Jewish, exactly. Yeah. And, and, um, and so... So, so I don't know. It's it gets it gets very it get it it, it gets into this weird shit. Um, if you watch like Jay Dyer, like his shit is just like the Gnostics are fucking Satanists, bro. Like that, that that's basically like his message, and I've I've gotten really kind of sick of it. Even though I kind of like his content in a weird way, but um, but it's basically like you know the Gnostics are his big bugbear that's his big enemy that he needs to like stop so that he can convince you to become a a, a, a orthodox greek orthodox christian or whatever um but yeah yeah i think that if we sort of step back from a lot of this stuff and just sort of see it the way the way you're talking about it kind of is like metaphors for what we're doing it, like what we as humans have done uh, and that's why like i call myself a polytheist but i'm not like a pagan like i'm not like worshiping zeus or something like that i believe there are multiple powers um, here, here listen here's the thing man there there are many accounts in many different religions this has come up uh islam and christianity most notably yeah there are there are accounts of mystics who at the time were considered heretics who would go on to be to be known as as saints who at the time, man, they hit such a level of mysticism, of, of knowing, that they would announce that I am God. Right. This was always misinterpreted. <laughs> this is never a claim that they, as an individual, are God. Mm -hmm. This is that their individual self has completely dissolved, and they realize that there is only God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's the goal. How do you compare that to the Freemasons and the like, like Jay Z, Lady Gaga? -esque? I think you can like, explain the, the absolute reality, it, it, dude. I think you could you could have it all. You could know you could hypothetically you know the answer. You know absolute reality, and you can tell right. it to somebody. And if they don't have the right motivation, the right mindset, the right understanding, they will misinterpret every fucking word of that, and they will use it to only benefit their carnal desires. Right. Yeah, no, that's I agree. That's why these yeah, are initiatory are systems. That's why you need a teacher. That's why someone has yeah. to initiate you because they have to vet you essentially.
The Freemasons don't fucking bet. They do on some level. Right. They make sure you have enough money, the right standing. You're fucking, but yeah. none of it is is real spiritual stuff. None of it. Right. I, I think the secret societies teach people that they're God, or they can become God if you let you know a Freemason do molest you. Exactly. Or well, like I said, they're all initiatory systems, and at the end, you realize I am God. And once again, it's right. not the individual you; it's that everything is God. But if you just tell right. someone you're God, what like, well, then you're Christian. I'm Jesus Christ from Western Shale. I don't necessarily. <laughs> I mean, like, there's a lot of problems with Crowley. But Crowley explains that shit in uh, the Book of Lies. He says that, like, basically, and there's a couple other other passages. Um, I'm forgetting exactly where, but basically, he says like the the sorcerer is the one who basically uh, never gets beyond himself, and he basically gets ultimate power, but that ultimate power is subordinated to himself, and he only is using magic in a way that serves himself and like the, 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 the final, I think it's the Ipsissimus um, is the one who is able to basically transcend themselves and realize also that they know nothing because they, because their self has been uh, like obliterated and transcended. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th I think Crowley actually like speaks to, to a lot of that, but, um, but yeah, I think the modern secret societies that are like running shit now, don't at all like acknowledge any of that they're just like no if you get enough money you just become god you're just god now and you can do whatever the fuck you want you can fuck kids that's the, the thing it's like once you have that power to actually be god like you and to play i should say play god once you can like move the chess pieces of like geopolitics around and shit like that like there's no way you can understand that shit properly there's no way Easier, easier for a rich man to pass through the head of a needle than to get into heaven. It's true. Yep. It's true. I think this is a good note to leave off on. We've been going for quite a while yeah. here. I'm gonna. I, I yeah, got yeah, some, that's a good, uh, good, 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 good chatting. Yeah. I got this. Totally. Kind Charles, of loops back around the Christian at the end. Got this yeah. Charles Manson <laughs> remix. So maybe that's a little bit related to this Christian shit. You know, I'll, I'll fucking kill this shit with. Hell yeah. He hasn't started a cult yet. Yeah, it fucking rips, right, dude? We need more cult leaders. Go out there and start your own cult to compete with Chris Chan. Chris Chan can't be the only one. We all need a cult now, dude. This is chaos magic, dude. You tell me what's significant to you. You tell me what you're going to shove up your ass. What matters most to you? Shove it right up your ass because you don't need it. All you need is God. And your God is a hedgehog, a hedgehog God, a spiny God. And he's going for the haters and the trolls. All you dirty, dirty haters and trolls out there. Clyde Cash, I'm coming for you. I'm coming, Clyde Cash. Sign of shoes, zap to the extreme. Zap to the extreme. Oh, it rips, dude. If only Uncle Charlie was here to see this, dude. Give me his blessings. Gather your women, Charles Manson. Gather them for me. I need more beer. I need to drink more right the fuck now. I will catch all y'all out there later. Thank you for joining me, whether it's on Rumble, whether it's on YouTube. Buy t-shirts, give me money. I don't know, dude.